वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल दिस इज ट्रेंड स्टॉम एंड यू आर वाचिंग फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इफ नरुडो बिकेम्स डेमोनिक सामुराई इफ यू एंजॉय दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल नो वेस्टिंग नो मोर टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट योर स्टोरी नरुडो उजुमाकी इज द सन ऑफ किशिना उजुमाकी एंड मनाडो नामकाजी ही इज अ जिनचुरिकी फॉर द कायुबी नो किट्सुन ही डजंट नो दीस थिंग्स येट बट ही हैज ऑलवेज वंडर्ड हु हिज पेरेंट्स वर एंड व्हाई एवरीवन इन द विलेज सीम टू हेट हिम He was never hurt physically, but the villagers seemed happy enough with their hateful looks and whispers, among other things, to make him suffer. Because of these cruel things, his 6-year-old mind was full of certain thoughts. 6-year-old Naruto thought about his life as he sat on a swing that hung from a tree branch near the academy. Plain and simple, he didn't like it. Naruto couldn't help but wonder if being a shinobi was worth it as he looked at the faces on the Hokage monument. The Yandaimi was the one that caught his eye. Naruto even questioned whether or not this was even his home. As the first week of the academy went by, he started to swing. The memories made him think about the questions that were on his mind even more. A mind not too different from Nara's. Even though the teachers didn't care about what they called the blonde menace, there was one person who did care and who really got Naruto. The bookkeeper. Naruto got off the swing with a smile and walked to the library so he could think about something else. Maybe even taking a different path. As Naruto walked in, an old woman with white hair that was starting to thin, a lot of wrinkles, and a smile that was so contagious that you couldn't help but smile back greeted him. It was the one she gave Naruto when she stopped stamping her book. Ah, oh, Naruto, my boy, are you back to help you forget about things? Naruto smiled and said, "Hi Megumi," but no one was fooled by his smile. Megumi set down the stamp with a sigh and walked around her desk to give the blonde a hug. Once she was done, she stooped down to Naruto's level, which made her old knees pop and crack. Megumi couldn't help but sigh as she looked into Naruto's dull sapphire eyes with her own black, beady ones. Those eyes told a story. What seems to be the problem, Naruto? You can say anything to this old grandma. So Naruto did what he was told, and to say Megumi was upset about what the villagers did would be an understatement. She knew about Naruto's burden and about his parents, but Megumi didn't tell anyone because she knew it wasn't her place to. Megumi stood up, put her hand on Naruto's shoulder, and pointed to the eastern part of the library. "You should find what you want over there. Do you want me to walk you there?" Naruto answered by shaking his head. "Please sit down, Megumi. I'm not sure how much more your old bones could take." She ruffled Naruto's hair with a smile, which made the boy laugh. For being 6 years old, you are quite the gentleman. As Megumi went back to her desk, she saw how some of the people looked at Naruto with disgust. Megumi was saddened by what she saw and couldn't help but shake her head in shock. Naruto had found what he was looking for by the time she sat down and picked up the stamp. He was now looking for an empty desk to sit at. Naruto then opened the book and started to read. A samurai follows what is called bushido. which is a set of seven rules or virtues that every samurai warrior should live by and never stray from honesty bravery kindness courtesy honor and loyalty to give you more information the samurai warrior holds loyalty courage honesty kindness and honor to be more important than anything else has a respect and appreciation for life is dangerous in battle but kind and caring with children and the weak tries to get enlightened so they can make good decisions grow as people and understand themselves practices some kind of martial art or something else that helps him or her grow physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. uses death as a guide, not as an enemy. tries to figure out what know thyself means. seeks to understand the roles of the servant and the master in the community and the family. if a samurai doesn't follow this code, it is his job to kill himself. Naruto looked up from the book he was reading and rubbed his temples, thinking and feeling confused. Most of this was hard for him to understand because he was young. After a long break, Naruto picked up his book again and read that samurai worked for the daimyo and were only loyal to them. It was a fact that made Naruto smile, but when he thought about Bushido, the smile went away. Naruto closed the book with a shrug and looked at it with Megumi. Naruto couldn't help but feel happy as he ran toward the Hokage Tower, hoping that GG would know of a samurai trainer. A feeling he hadn't had for a long time. The Hokage Tower. Hirazan Serutobi, the Sandame Hokage, was doing paperwork, which is the worst thing that can happen to a cage. No matter how much he did, it seemed like the amount of work kept getting bigger and bigger. Oh, 
how he wished something or someone would break up the monotony of his work. Luckily, his wish came true when Naruto burst into the room. This put the Anbu on guard, but once they knew who it was, they could relax. Hiruzen looked at the title of the book with a raised eyebrow as it was slammed down on his desk, knocking over some papers in the process. He then turned the book to face his surrogate grandson. Why are you so interested in samurai now, my boy? The Sandame did not expect the answer she got. Naruto just said, the villagers. I can't shop, my teachers don't like me, and you and the Ichirakus are the only people I know. The Sandame ran his hand down his face and ended up absently stroking his goatee while thinking. On the one hand, he could give in to Naruto's request, but on the other, he wanted to force the boy to become a shinobi like his father. Hiruzen pleaded with Naruto, look, Naruto, it makes my old heart happy to see you try new things, but I still think you should give the academy another try. It turned out to be the wrong thing to say. No. I'll never go back to that hateful place again, Naruto said, as tears of sadness rolled down his face. I just want to die, gg. I can't take the looks any longer. The Sandame really felt his age when he heard those last four words. No six-year-old should want to die. Instead, they should be happy and ready to see what the world has to offer. Find out. Hiruzen thought about the way of the samurai when he heard that one word. He knew them pretty well, since he had fought in three wars and lived through the time when clans were at war with each other. When he had time to think, he might agree to Naruto's request and tell him who his parents were. Hiruzen mentally nodded and gave a small smile. He knew exactly who could help in this situation. A few months ago, a retired samurai from Iron Country opened a shop and was looking for an apprentice. Hiruzen stood up and walked around his desk to comfort Naruto. As he did this, he couldn't stop thinking about the boy's family. The Sandame told him, you don't have to beg for death, my grandson. In time, the people of the village will realize how powerful the person they lost was. Hiruzen wiped the tears away as Naruto sniffled and looked up. Even though his last sentence confused him, the boy with blonde hair knew that his words made sense. As the Sandame gave Naruto the book and was let out, he couldn't stop grinning like a megawatt. Hiruzen couldn't help but notice what Naruto had been going through all these years once he was out of the office and on the streets. It showed him that he had broken his sensei's most important rule. The family always comes first. He hadn't cared for Naruto, who he thinks of as family. Even though the whole village was his family, he had softened as he got older. With eyes like steel, he promised in his mind that this village would be strong again. After walking for ten minutes, Sandame and Naruto came to a small shop that sold many different things. The outside of the store didn't look like much, but the inside was what gave it its name, which was written on a large window next to the front door. Emporium of H-A-R-U-M-A-S-A. -A -A. Everyone could see the man's goods through this window. On the right wall were katana, wakazashi, and tanto swords in different sizes, as well as wooden practice swords called bakken. On the left side of the wall were tea sets, repair kits for clothes and or armor, and bows. There were barrels of shuriken and arrows on the wooden floor of the store. Lastly, different types of samurai armor, kimonos, and geta sandals were hanging on the wall behind the front desk. As Naruto and Hiruzen walked in, a bell rang and footsteps came from the back of the store. In just a few seconds, an older man walked out and smiled at them. The elder was taller than Hiruzen and had fair skin with a few wrinkles. His eyes were black, just like his hair, which was tied in a topknot. On his left cheek, there was a small scar that showed what he did for a living. He wore a white kimono, black pants, and geta sandals. Two swords, a katana and a wakazashi, were tied to his right side with a black sash. The old man bowed to his guests. His voice was strong but kind, just like Hiruzen's. Welcome, Hokage-sama, and guest. My name is Fukui Harumasa, and this is my shop. As Hiruzen was about to speak, he saw the retired samurai and Naruto looking at each other. One was amazed by the man in front of him, and the other frowned when he saw the story in those dull sapphire eyes, just like Megumi. Fukui soon turned his attention to the Sandame. Hokage Dono, you brought me a young boy who seemed to be lost, Harumasa said with a smile as he looked at Naruto once more. Tell me, kid, what's making you sad? Even though he was scared and his mouth felt like it was full of cotton balls, Naruto had a strange feeling that he could trust this man. Naruto said it straight out, my life in this village. I hate them both, and the samurai seems like my only way out. 
Fukui agreed and decided to keep asking questions. I see, but tell me, why do you want to follow Bushido? Is it for respect or to get back at someone? Naruto looked confused, and the wrinkles on his face made the retired samurai laugh a little. Fukui liked that Naruto was innocent like a child, which was something he had lost a long time ago. Fukui smiled when he saw the blonde boy in front of him. He felt like he was back in his own childhood. You are an empty glass waiting to be filled. You have gone off the path of life and don't know where to go. Naruto yelled, Make sense, old man. Before he bent down to Naruto's level, the samurai laughed. What's your name, little one? The name, Naruto Uzumaki. Let's start over, Naruto. Why do you want to be a samurai? The more Naruto thought about it, the less he understood. He felt sad because he thought he'd never amount to anything in life. But that warm feeling he had before came back, which made him smile. I don't know why, but when I think about the path of the warrior, I always feel good. Harumasa hummed and patted Naruto on the shoulders as he stood, wondering why this was happening. As he looked at Hiruzen, he saw that every time he looked at Naruto, he had a sad look on his face. He sighed and smiled at Naruto to make him feel better. Hold on, Naruto. You can look around while I talk to the Hokage, okay? Naruto said, yes, and ran quickly to the Wall of Swords. When the two older people went into the back room, his six-year-old mind was drawn to the samurai armor. The warmth came back, and Naruto smiled as he reached for his armor. Hiruzen and Fukui were talking quietly in the back room, so Naruto couldn't hear what they were saying. You brought me a rough diamond, Hokage Dono, he said. I can tell he's still not sure if this is the right path for him or not, but I'm getting off track. At first, he looked calm, but his face quickly turned stern. Tell me, why haven't you told Naruto about his family history and what he is? The Hokage was now ready to kill the person standing in front of him. Harumasa, on the other hand, never moved an inch. He was as calm as a lake. How do you know so much that is secret? Calm down, Hokage-sama. I'm not your enemy. I just put the facts together. Hiruzen glared at Fukui and asked, have you been following Naruto? If so, I won't think twice about killing you right now. The Sandame was so careful that it made the samurai smile. No, Hokage-sama. I've been here for two months, and the villagers, including the ninja, seem to like their sake a little too much. The Hokage was angry and clenched his fists. After taking a deep breath, he let go of his anger. Fukui leaned against the back wall and said, My master, Mifune, told me that I would meet a boy who had lost his way before coming here. Hokage Dono, he told me that the fate of the elemental nations in Iron Country would be in his hands alone. Hiruzen thought, this is almost like Jiraiya's prediction from the toads. He then looked the samurai in the eyes. If I agree to do this, will you teach Naruto your style? Harumasa shook his head and gave a shoulder shrug. That is Naruto's decision, not mine. As for your other question, my style is based on Iaido, which is the art of drawing a sword. Hiruzen tensed up when Fukui took a sudden stance. There was a flash of silver, but the cage didn't move. He caught the blade's tip calmly with his right index and middle fingers, adding earth chakra so he wouldn't get hurt. Fukui couldn't help but laugh out loud. When he was done, he wiped tears from his eyes. That's what I expected from the god of Shinobi. A man who lived through not only the warring clan era but also three wars. Hiruzen let go of the sword, and it was soon put back in its sheath. I'm glad to see that, after sitting at that desk for so long, you haven't lost your touch. The Hokage just couldn't stop grinning. What good would I be as a cage if I didn't keep getting better? But that's not the point. What style was that? I've never seen anything like it in all my years. The samurai smiled back at him. Mu's Jikidan Asian Rai is one of the styles Naruto will learn if he chooses the path of the warrior. Hiruzen wanted to know more about that sword style, but he also knew how important it was to keep secrets. He didn't keep pushing. Shall we check up on my grandson who was born through surrogacy? Fukui nodded, and the two of them walked out of the office into the front of the store where Naruto was standing with a katana in his right hand and samurai armor on. Both of the older men smiled as they watched Naruto swing the sword in different directions. After a minute, Fukui shook his head and laughed to himself. Well, Naruto, it looks like you've decided what to do. Ah. Naruto jumped in the air because he hadn't expected them to come back yet. 
he quickly sheathed the katana and put it back on the shelf while he took off his armor. Hiruzen's smile grew when he saw Naruto's happy face. It looks like Naruto is back on track. Minato and Kashina, you should be proud. I'm sorry, Samurai-san. I was just interested, Naruto said with a blush. The samurai moved his hands in the air. Don't worry, Naruto. I see you want to follow the Bushido way of life. It wasn't sure, but Naruto nodded to show that he agreed. Hi, but parts of it were hard to understand. All in good time, child. I will teach you the way of the warrior, among other things. First things first, that orange monstrosity has to go, and you will be wearing what I am. But I like orange. Naruto yelled. The samurai hit him on the head, which made Naruto look at him with a mean look. Ow. Why did you hit me? Fukui looked at Naruto with a serious face and said, You don't have any discipline, and you were too busy thinking about me burning that hideous outfit to pay attention to me. Naruto was amazed as the samurai seemed to know what was on Naruto's mind. This got him hit on the head again, which made Hiruzen laugh. You were distracted by how I read your mind, so we'll work on that. Don't expect anything, and be ready for anything. Your training starts tomorrow at 5 am, and I expect you to be here on time. Naruto said, hi, and then looked at the Hokage. GG, can we get some ramen? Fukui cut him off with a firm, no. You need to eat more vegetables and get a well-balanced meal. Ramen should only be eaten on special occasions. Naruto sulked, but the villagers only sell me rotten or overpriced food. The Sandame's eyes suddenly lit up with anger. Naruto, we're going shopping. I think they should know who's in charge around here. Haramusu Dono, thank you for helping Naruto and me. Thank you very much, Hokage Dono. After they left, Fukui smiled and said, I need to tell Mifune Dono that I have found my student. Maybe he can teach my student in the future, too. Evening, Mifune's office, Iron Country. It was getting dark in Iron Country. Mifune was finishing up his day's work when a messenger came in, bowed, and gave the message to his leader. After the older samurai took it, the messenger got up and left without saying a word. The leader of Iron Country turned the envelope over with a curious look and smiled when he saw Fukui's name on the front. Hum, my student, what do you have here? Have you found the one the prophecy said would come? Mifune turned the envelope over, opened it, took the letter out, and started reading. Dear Master or Mifune-sama, I've found the person foretold by the prophecy, but I worry about the boy's mental health. Konoha has hurt him deeply, but don't worry, the darkness inside him will be tamed. We will believe this boy because he is the son of a Hokage and a woman from the whirlpool. He has a fox that walks on the leaves. With respect. Harumasa Fukui. Mifune closed the letter and put it back in the envelope with a smile because the puzzle at the end was easy to solve. The samurai leader wasn't surprised that the boy's sanity was on the edge. After all, a Jinchuriki that is known by the people is bound to cause hate, since people tend to fear what they don't understand. Even though this was a good thing, Mifune knew that the boy needed to be trained and that it would be a while before he was ready to come to this land. The old leader groaned as he rubbed his head. But will my training and that of my students be enough to stop the civil unrest that grows in my home's snowy mountains? As soon as Mifune thought of a quote, a smile came to his face. Those who wait get what they want. The next day, when Harumasa's emporium. The store's bell rang, and then a door shut. Naruto had arrived just as he was supposed to. He didn't understand why no one seemed to be in the store. Samurai-san, are you there? He yelled, and Fukui quickly came out of the back of the store. Oh Naruto. I can see that you got here on time. You are a very responsible person. Fukui went to the back and came back a short time later with Naruto's outfit. Put that on, or you will burn that orange suit you wear afterward. Naruto hesitated, so his teacher smacked him on the back of the head and said, Remember what I told you yesterday, child, don't expect anything, and be ready for anything. How do I get ready if it looks like nothing is going to happen? That's a good question, young student, but that's the lesson for today, being aware of what's going on around you. Now, go change and meet me in the back. Hello, samurai. From now on, you can call me master, my young student. The samurai said in a harsh tone. He nodded and said, Hi, Master Harumasa. Naruto took five minutes to change because he had never worn a kimono before, but once he did, he felt good in it because it was soft and light. 
he wore a simple white kimono, black pants, and get a sandals, just like his master. When Naruto got to the back of the store with his old clothes, he saw Fukui standing by a wood-burning stove that was used to keep warm in the winter. The second one pointed to the stove and kept his stern face. Put your old clothes in here, Naruto, and light them on fire. When your old clothes burn, it means that part of you has died. What you're wearing now is the start of your new life as a warrior. Naruto looked at his clothes one last time before doing what he was told. He looked at the match he was given, sighed, and then struck it on the stove and threw it on his clothes. As Naruto watched his old clothes burn, all he could think about was what the samurai told him the day before. I'm just a glass that's empty and waiting to be filled. After a few minutes, Fukui pointed to the front of the store and told Naruto to follow him. Once he got there, he took a three-foot bakken off the wall, which was just right for Naruto, who was three feet six inches tall. Next, Harumasa got a black silk belt from behind the counter and put it on his student, along with the obi. On the right side, the bakken fit securely between the belt and the kimono. Naruto looked at the old man with a raised eyebrow after the act, which Fukui noticed. You won't be able to use a sword for a few more years. The bakken is for you to get used to how heavy a sword is. This will have to do until you get your real swords. Fukui patted Naruto on the shoulders and pointed him toward the door. Come on, we're going to walk around the village now. Pay close attention to everything around you. High Lord. The Council Rooms. The clan leaders Shibi Abarame, Inoichi Yamanaka, Shikaku Nara, Hiyashi Hayuga, Sume Inazuka, Fugaku Uchiha, and Choza Akamichi, as well as their advisors Kaharu and Homura and Danzo, were all waiting for the Hokage to arrive. No one knew what this meeting was about, and they were confused about why it was so early. They didn't have to wait long. When the council doors opened, Hiruzen was there, dressed as a Hokage and looking very serious. The shinobi god had come back. Advisors, Danzo and clan heads, I've called this meeting to tell you that we've messed up one of our most important legacies, and this village and I are the only ones to blame. Hiruzen took a deep breath to calm himself down. He was surprised by how quiet everyone was. Naruto Uzumaki started school a week ago, but he decided to take a different path yesterday when he brought me a book about the samurai. When I looked into Naruto's eyes yesterday, I saw who he really was. A child, an innocent child who was forced to carry a heavy load without his consent, on the verge of falling apart, on the verge of destroying this village. Danzo spoke up and showed his dislike by saying, Samurai. Bah. This is a village for ninjas, not for samurai. I say that you should give Naruto to me so I can train him. Hiruzen pounded his fists on the table and said, Danzo, how many times do I have to say the same thing? No. Don't even think for a second that I don't know about your root program, which is still running. If you do anything to Naruto and his master, who is a retired samurai from Iron Country, you won't get off easy. The clan leaders and advisors laughed at how surprised Danzo looked. If I may speak up, Hokage-sama, who is Naruto's master now? Shibi wanted to know. Mifune taught Fukui Harumasa, so I know Naruto is in good hands. Are you sure that's the right name, Hokage-sama? Asked Hiyashi with wide eyes. It is Hiyashi-san for sure, why do you ask? When the Hayuga was being made, there were still samurai all over the land, and the Harumasa clan was working with us because we had fought them so many times. As the years went by, the samurai in our alliance seemed to go away. I have to talk to this man. No one in the council room was expecting that answer, so there was silence. Homura cleared his throat after about five minutes of silence. This is interesting, but I think you had other things to do, Hokage-sama. The Hokage nodded and said, yes, if you remember what I said earlier, that we messed up one of our most important legacies, and that has to do with Naruto Uzumaki. Hiruzen took a manila folder out of his robes and slammed it on the big desk. He opened it and took out a birth certificate, a blood test, and a marriage certificate. These three papers were passed around. Those show that Naruto is the son of our Hokage Yandaimi and Kashina Uzumaki. I'll tell Naruto everything because he's been hurt by this village for too long. After that, everyone in the village will know what sins they've committed. No one could deny the truth that was right in front of them, but Danzo still had some worries. What happened to Iwa and Kumo? That, old pal, is where your root will come in handy, Hiruzen said with a smirk. I want a list of every shinobi you are in charge of and what skills they have. In fact, 
I'll have Jiraiya and Tsunade come back so that any seals you put on them can be taken off and they can be checked to see if they are ready to work. If you say no to my request, your head will roll, Danzo. The war hawk sighed because he knew there was nothing he could do, but the Hokage had one more rule. Oh, and Danzo, we'll look over all the files we get from your base. If you do anything that looks like treason, you will be killed in public. I'm in charge of Root as of right now. The Hokage smiled when he saw his old rival's angry face. It made him laugh even more when the clan heads and advisors started to laugh. Danzo clenched his fists and muttered, Hi Hokage-sama. That's all I had to say, and we're out of here. Hiyashi, Harumasa Dono should be training Naruto, but I'll tell him you want to meet. Hiyashi thanked him with a bow, and the two of them left the room with the rest of the people. Having Naruto. Master, this is boring. I do what you say, but I don't see anything unusual. When Naruto huffed and crossed his arms, he got hit on the head. Fukui sighed and said, be patient, young student. It will take time to get good at this. For instance, we have been followed by two Anbu. One is hiding behind the trash can behind me, and the other is on the roof watching me. How did he see us when we used a technique to hide ourselves? Naruto had no idea what was going on. I'm not feeling anyone? Fukui laughed, then took a deep breath to calm himself. Naruto, close your eyes and open your senses, but don't pay attention to anything else around you. Naruto did what he was told and tried to block out the sounds around him. It took him 10 minutes, but he finally succeeded. After focusing for another 5 minutes, he suddenly opened his eyes with a gasp. What was that hazy mist I saw around the Anbu? The samurai was impressed. He was so young, and he already knew how to use his key. Maybe there's more to this boy than I thought before. That is the key or Kai, which is the life force of every living thing on earth. It's amazing that you've tapped into it at your age. Naruto put his hand to his head. Arg, I'm so confused. You're only six, so you're right, but that's the next part of your homework. After today's lesson, you should go to the library and read about the cage, the villages, the terrain, and everything else in the elemental nations. Don't expect anything and be ready for everything. Naruto asked a question. The man who taught Naruto smiled and patted him on the head. Very good, Naruto. Let's continue our lesson now, but outside the village walls. You're welcome to come over, Anbu-san. I promise I won't bite. This is something that needs to be told to the Hokage. They left the master. I heard the wind that was picked up. Fukui blinked in surprise and said, thanks to the Kyubi, I have better senses. That's just one more thing I'll be working on. When you finish school, you might be a better samurai than I am. As they walked to a training ground with a waterfall and lots of trees, they didn't say anything else to each other. There were lots of sounds of birds chirping and animals running around. He was given a blindfold before he could ask what they were going to do. All of your senses will be sharpened by me. First I'll take away your sight, then your sense of smell, your sense of hearing, and then your sense of touch. The samurai gave the news. Are you sure that this is necessary, master? Fukui found a stone on the ground and hit Naruto with it. This made Naruto's head move backward. What were you thinking, you old fool? Never ask your master a question. The training of a samurai includes all of the paths of Bushido. You chose this path, and if you were to leave it, I would have to kill you after you cut your own stomach open. Naruto looked into his master's serious eyes and stuttered, why you're kidding, right? Fukui's eyes got smaller, and his voice became colder. No, a samurai never lies. If a samurai says he will do something, he will do it, because that's what Bushido requires. Then his voice got warmer. But you're only six, so you'll get it in time. Stop talking and put on a blindfold. Naruto didn't think twice, but as soon as it started, he was hit with several stones, which made him scream in pain. Even if a samurai is blind, he can still fight, listen for the sound of an incoming projectile, and move out of the way. Fukui gave the order. Naruto tried to move out of the way, but he was hit again. Naruto had had enough of getting hit, so he turned up the music to drown out everything else. When Fukui saw Naruto's shoulders relax, he smiled to himself. That's it, student. Take a deep breath and let your other senses lead you. Fukui threw a stone the size of a baseball at Naruto's face at a very high speed, knowing that Naruto could catch it. 
Naruto didn't know what to do because it was quiet and he had nothing on his mind. Then he heard a sound like a wind blowing. Naruto let his instincts lead him and reached out with his right hand to catch the stone. Yay I did it. Naruto's happy dance didn't last long because a pebble-sized stone hit him right in the forehead, bringing him back to reality. You were distracted by how happy you were to finish your job. We'll keep doing this until lunch. During breaks, you'll do push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, and squats. Get in place. Naruto nodded, but he was still rubbing his head where the stone had hit it. Hi Lord. The Hokage Office. Inu, Hawk, I see you came back from your protection job hours early. Would you mind telling me why? The Hokage said, looking at the two Anbu in front of him with narrowed eyes. I'm sorry, Hokage, but Harumasa-san and Naruto found us. Hawk said, and Inu added to what he said. Harumasa said that Naruto used something called Ki or Kai. Is that even possible, sir? Hiruzen lit his clay pipe and took a few puffs, which filled the air with the smell of tobacco. I don't know much about Kai, but I find it hard to believe that a six-year-old could find you. The samurai, yes, but Naruto? Are you sure you haven't been slacking off, Inu, Hawk? Not Hokage-sama. Both of them said something quickly, which made the Hokage get up from his seat and walk toward the door. Good, then I'll have to look into Naruto's training myself. Watch the office while I'm gone. Hi, Lord Hokage. As Hiruzen disappeared in a puff of black smoke, the Anbu bowed. Having Naruto. Naruto was now on his second set of 20 crunches, sit-ups, and push-ups. Harumasa would stand on Naruto's back while he did push-ups to give him more weight. This made Naruto lash out at his master, which caused Harumasa to stomp on him and knock him to the ground. After getting beaten up a few times, Naruto just kept doing his exercises until he was done. Once he was done, Naruto got up from his crunches and brushed the dirt off his kimono and the sweat off his forehead. He still had the blindfold on. Harumasa suddenly felt something, so he decided to put his student to the test. Tell me, Naruto, can you tell that something is wrong with the place where we are training? Naruto tried to use all of his senses to find something, but he didn't find anything. Not really, master. I only heard birds singing in a few trees to my right. Fukui gave Naruto hope when he saw the look of defeat on his face. Good try, but as I've already said. It will take a long time to learn everything the samurai have to teach. After a short break, the older samurai looked at a tree nearby. You can come out, Hokage-sama. I can tell you want to talk to my student. Naruto turned to the tree and took off his blindfold to see the sandame walking toward them. Yes, I do, but the woods have too many eyes and ears. Fukui nodded, then looked at his student. Then our lesson for the day is over. Naruto, when you're done, come to my store to get more of your new clothes and burn your old ones at home. Also, don't forget to do your work. He bowed and said, Hi, thank you, master. Before we break up. Harumasa Dono, Hiyashi Hayuga wants to talk to you about an old agreement between his clan and yours. The samurai's eyes lit up as he remembered the contract well. Yes, I haven't seen a Hayuga in a long time. I'm the last member of my clan, which is sad. Perhaps my student will carry on my legacy when I'm gone. No way. Will you stop that old man? I've got enough bruises today. Is heard on the training ground. Emotions can make you lose focus on the fight and other possible dangers. Your next lesson will be about mediation tomorrow at the same time. Please go, Hokage-sama. Fukui did a bow. Hiruzen gave the bow back and led Naruto to the Hokage Tower while Harumasa went to the Hayuga compound to find out what Hiyashi wanted. The Hokage Tower. As Naruto and Hiruzen came in, the Hokage told Inu, Hawk, and the hidden Anbu to leave. He then put up security seals so that no one else could hear what was going on. Hiruzen sat in his chair, and Naruto sat down on the couch. So, GG, what did you want to say? Hiruzen began in a sad voice as he leaned back in his chair. I woke up when I saw your cold eyes and heard what the other villagers were saying about you yesterday. No longer would people think I'm weak, and I've taken steps to make sure Konoha no longer hurts you. Not that I'm happy about that, but why tell me this? Naruto scratched his head a little bit. You've always wanted to know about your parents and why everyone in the village hated you, and now is your chance. After lunch, the village will learn about your family history. 
Naruto sat still as he watched Hiruzen get up and take down the picture of the Yandaimi, which was on the wall with the other past Hokage. Under this picture was a safe. After it was unlocked, Hiruzen grabbed two scrolls and gave them to Naruto when everything was back in place. On one scroll was a spiral, and on the other was the kanji for, Namikaze. Naruto gasped in shock when he saw the kanji. No, that can't be, because if the Yandaimi was my father, then the Kaiubi must be. Hiruzen looked sad as he sat next to Naruto and nodded. Yes, the Kaiubi is locked up inside you, which is why the villagers hate you. They see you as the demon, not as the thing that keeps it from happening. What does this spiral represent? Naruto asked as he carefully looked at the scroll. That is the symbol of the Uzumaki clan, which was sadly lost in the second war. Before that, your mother, Kashina Uzumaki, was from Uzu. Please know that your parents loved you very much and were sorry that they had to use you to hold the Kaiubi. I'm sorry I didn't tell you this. Naruto wiped his tears away and hugged his grandfatherly figure. Thank you, GG, and I forgive you, but how will the village take it? Hiruzen just shrugged and said, we'll see what happens later today. For now, how about we find a new home? I have to get my clothes from my master GG, and then we'll go to my parents' house. I have a better idea, since Harumasa-san is probably still talking to Hiyashi. How about some ramen? Yes. Naruto put his hands over his mouth when he did this. It looks like master is right about how I feel. Hiruzen ruffled Naruto's hair and said, I hope to see you one day in full samurai gear, Naruto. I think your parents would still be proud of you even though you're not a ninja. Perhaps, but ramen, let's go, GG. Hiruzen laughed as Naruto pulled him out of the office by the hand. Oh, Minato and Kashina, if you could only see your son right now. District of Hyuga. Fukui Harumasa walked up to the guards at the Hyuga district gate, bowed to them, and was quickly taken to Hiyashi's office. Hiyashi and Harumasa bowed to each other when the door was shut. T, Mr. Harumasa? Hiyashi pointed to the tea set on one of the tables next to his desk and asked. That would be great, Hiyashi-sama. Thank you. Once the clan head poured the samurai's tea and gave him the cup and saucer, they sat down and started talking. Hiyashi cleared his throat and began in a royal tone, Harumasa-sama, it is an honor to meet you, and I hope that we can maybe rebuild the alliance we once had with your ancestors. Fukui is great. There's no need for honorifics between allies, Hiyashi-sama. The samurai took a sip of his tea and smiled as he drank it. Ah, a hint of jasmine, he said. Thank you, the tea is lovely. Hiyashi gave a small smile and said, thank you, but maybe we should get to the point. Oh, hey, this old body of mine seems to keep thinking about the past. Harumasa cleared his throat and said, enough waiting. You want to bring back our old alliance, right? Hiyashi nodded, and they both took a sip of tea at the same time. As much as I would love to, Hiyashi-sama, I am the last of my clan, so I cannot continue this alliance. The head of the Hyuga clan sighed and opened his eyes wide when he heard what happened today, Fukui, maybe your student can take your name and carry on your lineage. The man put up his hand to say, stop. Even though your goals are good, Hiyashi-sama, it's not up to me to decide. It's Naruto's job. Whether or not he keeps his lineage intact is up to him, but only as time goes on and he walks the path of the warrior and learns more about what life is all about will my student be able to make the right decision. Hiyashi took a moment to think about the strange answer, but then he shrugged and put the teacup and saucer on a desk nearby. It's a shame, but those who wait get good things. Maybe we can talk about the good old days? Fukui smiled and said, it would be my pleasure. At his new house, Naruto was sitting on the brown leather couch. He looked at the picture of his parents in his hands with a sad look on his face. Yes, Naruto was finally able to move back in with his parents. It wasn't fancy by any stretch of the imagination, but it did the job. There are two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen, a family room, a library, and a training room in the basement. One of them was painted bright orange and had a crib in one corner and a toy-filled chest in another. This is what made Naruto look at the picture of his parents. Kashina and Minato both had big smiles on their faces as they held her pregnant stomach. Naruto sniffled, wiped away a tear, stood up, and put the picture back on the wall before going to the master bedroom. As he walked toward the room, he couldn't help but feel both happy and angry about how the village reacted to his heritage. Think back. Naruto and Hiruzen just left Harumasa's emporium, and as they were leaving, 
The old samurai reminded Naruto of his homework and lesson for tomorrow. Naruto thanked him and left the store, but the sandame led him to the Hokage Tower instead of to his apartment. Here, the Uzumaki knew it was time to see how the village would react. When someone put a comforting hand on his shoulder, Naruto looked up and saw Hiruzen smiling. Even though it calmed the emotions that were going through her head, she was still nervous. I know you're scared, Naruto, but you have to show these villagers what you really are, a samurai in training and the next heir to the Uzumaki clan. Sandame had said. Naruto let out a sigh and just nodded. An Anbu was sent to gather the villagers with a flick of a finger, and five minutes later, the same one came back to say that they were ready. Naruto took a deep breath and stepped out onto the balcony. The Hokage was to his right, and he looked down at the people who were giving him what he called, the stink eye. He also saw the people who wouldn't sell him food, clothes, or the tools he needed to become a better shinobi, not that it mattered now. Then people began to whisper. What does that have to do with the Hokage? Did the Hokage finally decide to kill that horrible thing? What does it have on? After what it did, it doesn't deserve those clothes. Hiruzen heard these whispers, but what did Naruto think about them? When the Sandame looked at his surrogate grandson, Naruto, he was surprised to see him calm, but he did notice that Naruto's fists were clenched, which made him sigh inside. He is trying so hard to remember what Harumasa taught him and what he read in that samurai book. After he pulled himself out of his thoughts, the Hokage looked down at the villagers and held up a hand to quiet them down. Then Naruto's family history was revealed, which had different effects. Many villagers flat out denied it, some wanted to kill themselves for their sins, others were glad they treated the boy with respect, and a few were neutral. Hiruzen tried to get Naruto to say something, but all he did was give the crowd a cold look and point to himself. Then he tried again to get the crowd's attention. The message was clear. This is who I really am and what will happen because of what you did. One person in the village picked up a stone, which the Hokage caught and used to tell his Anbu to stop. Hiruzen wanted to hear what Naruto had to say. The stone was indeed thrown right at Naruto's head, where he caught it with ease. Naruto picked up the rock and tossed it back and forth between his hands while he thought about what to say. He could fight back, but what would Harumasa say? On the other hand, he could just leave the villager alone to see what would happen. He made up his mind quickly as he looked at the person who threw the stone. I would throw this back at you, but as a samurai in training, I must follow Bushido. When I first met my master, he told me, you are all lost people with empty cups waiting to be filled. Naruto quickly dropped the rock, turned around, and headed back inside. The Hokage was right behind him. Most of the villagers were now confused because they didn't know what to do to make up to the Uzumaki heir. End of flashback. Naruto laughed to himself when he thought about all the people who followed him in the Sandame to his parents' house, with some of them trying to give him gifts and flowers. Naruto didn't take any of these gifts, and he told them nicely that how they behaved from now on would decide whether he would forgive them or not. Fukui was watching the whole thing, but Naruto had no idea. An action that made the older man cry a happy tear. When Naruto went to bed and closed his eyes, all he could think about was his training and the path he had chosen. Start point. Danzo sat at his desk and looked at the files in front of him as he thought about what to do. He could either destroy the files or agree to do what Hiruzen asked. While doing this, however, the Warhawk thought about how his route could be found out. I could only think of one thing. A wart. But. I double and even triple checked everything I did? Danzo grunted in anger and pushed the papers off his desk. As they fell to the floor, he saw something he wanted and grabbed it before it hit the floor. He crumpled up the paper because of what he saw. Hiruzen, damn you. On the paper, which was now crumpled, there was a seal that Danzo thought was for recording. He had already decided, and he knew he couldn't run away. One of his trusted agents, Sai, came in and got on his knees when he hit the floor with his cane. You called up Danzo-sama? The agent said it without any feeling. Danzo got the files he needed, put them in a scroll, sealed it, and put it on his desk. Give these to Hiruzen and tell him I will do everything I can to help. Sai nodded, took the papers, and did what she was told. Danzo let out a big sigh and rubbed his temples as everything around him fell apart. Then he thought of a possibility that made him laugh out loud. Yes, the Warhawk was in a tight spot, but he wasn't done yet. You poor fool Hiruzen, you're fooling yourself. I'll do everything you ask, but can't you see the storm I'm about to make? The big tree would die without its roots. Danzo laughed and then hit the ground with his cane, which made more agents come in. 
Start the fox hunt operation. Immediately, Danzo Sama. The emotionless drones said this and went off to do their job, but Danzo was smiling evilly the whole time. Yes, the big tree wouldn't be able to live without its roots. I'll make sure it happens. Estate of Serutobi. Hirazan sat on the couch in his family room and drank his green tea. He looked at the piece of paper next to him, which had a seal on it, and smiled. In fact, Danzo's office had the same one. Even though the base's seal had been broken, Hirazan didn't care because his spy would fill in the rest. Not long after, someone knocked on the front door. Come on in. When the door opened, Sai walked in with a scroll in his hands shortly after. Once he was in front of the Hokage, he bowed out of respect, but his voice was not completely calm. In fact, it went back to a normal, calm tone. Danzo is angry, and I'm worried about my safety, Hokage-sama. Maybe you could take care of me? Hirazan took the scroll and told Sai to stand up. He patted the boy on the shoulder and then told him to sit down. You could. When the Sandame pointed to the tea kettle on the table in front of Sai, he sat down and smiled. How about some tea while we talk about your old master? Please. And thank you, Hokage-sama, for giving me a second chance after my mission in the Land of Iron failed. Always Sai. As he gave the boy his cup of tea, he asked him a question he's been wanting to ask for a year. I know you were only seven years old when the mission happened, but can you tell me what happened that day? Sai sighed, took a sip of his tea, and grimaced as bad memories came back to him. Hokage-sama, this might take a while. Don't worry, I've got all night. Hirazan said with a smile, and Sai started his story from there. The morning after. Naruto was back at the training field with his blindfold on. As before, when stones were thrown at him, he dodged them. Harumasa was happy with his students' progress, even though he wasn't quite good at the technique yet. Fukui told Naruto to rest an hour later. Naruto took off his blindfold and sat under a nearby tree to get some shade. You've done a great job so far, my student, but now you'll have to show a lot of patience. Fukui told them to do something with his right index finger in the air. Remember that a moment of patience can stop a big problem, and a moment of impatience can ruin your whole life. Naruto scratched his head when he was thinking, which made his master laugh. You might not understand my wise words today, child, but when I can't be with you anymore, my lessons will make perfect sense. Naruto smiled and nodded, then watched as Harumasa moved into the Siza position. When Naruto was in the same spot, he listened to his master's orders. Now that you're in place, I want you to sit like this to meditate. Fukui put his hands on his lap, one on top of the other with the thumbs touching. Naruto had to try a few times before he got it, but he did. Now, close your eyes, take deep breaths, and clear your mind of everything while ignoring the sounds around you. Naruto did what his master told him to do while his master watched and wondered how long his student would be able to sit still. It was quiet for a few minutes, but then people started to complain. Master, this is boring. What is this supposed to do, besides make me sleepy? When a rock hit Naruto in the head, his head jerked back. Ow. When Naruto opened his eyes, he jerked back at the stern look Fukui was giving him. Remember what I said about having patience? Even though Naruto nodded, the samurai knew he was lying. You may say yes with your head, but your thoughts say no. Patience is the key to getting to know yourself, my student. It will teach you to think clearly, just like it did when you found out about your family history. Naruto stuttered, why you saw that? He was shocked. Fukui smiled and nodded. Hi, and I couldn't be more proud. I saw how hard you tried. You wanted to get even, but revenge isn't one of the principles of Bushido, is it? No, Master Harumasa, he said. Naruto said quietly as he lowered his head. The old samurai could see that his student's mind was turning. Do you know why that is, and why revenge is not a good idea? Naruto's head shot up when he remembered what Harumasa had said when he was younger, revenge isn't patient and will ruin lives. The samurai clapped his hands and smiled as big as he could. Good job, my student, good job. Now that you know, you should go back to meditating. Naruto did what Harumasa told him to do with a smile, even though Harumasa knew it would take Naruto a while to master his inner self and beat the darkness within. As the old samurai watched his student, he felt a presence that had been watching from the start leave the area. Oh, so someone wants my student. I'll play their game for the time being. After all, being patient is a good thing. The Hokage Office. 
The Sandame Hokage had a long night as he learned about the mission to the Iron Country. In short, Danzo wanted to get rid of Mifune, so he sent Sai on a mission that would kill him. Sai was about to attack, but the snow and cold of Iron Country made him sick before he could. In a strange turn of events, Mifune was the one who found Sai passed out and covered in snow near the main village. When he had healed Sai, Mifune asked him where he was from. Because Sai was so close to dying, the seal on his tongue fell off. This helped when Sai told the leader of the samurai what was going on. After writing a letter to Hiruzen, Sai was cleared of all charges and sent back home, but in a stealthy way. Then Sai's outlook on life changed, and he vowed to stop Danzo's bad behavior. Hiruzen was going through the many files Danzo had given him at the moment. As he looked, he realized that his old rival hid his tracks for a living. Almost all of the files were useless, except for a few that needed more study, but none of them showed that Danzo had done anything that was against the law. Sandame couldn't stand it because he knew the old Warhawk must be plotting something. A knock on his door stopped him from going on with what he was thinking. But as Hiruzen stood up, he heard a knock on the window. His students had come to class. After letting Jiraiya in through the window, Hiruzen opened the door so Tsunade, Shizun, and her pig, Tauntin, could come in. The two Senen were glad to see that their sensei was doing well. Hiruzen smiled and said, Jiraiya, Tsunade, Shizun. And Toten. Thank you for coming, but before we talk, please go get Naruto Uzumaki and Harumasa Dono from the Anbu. A shunshin was heard to show that the Anbu had left, and the two people the Hokage had mentioned were in front of them in less than two minutes. Hi GG. Fukui hit Naruto on the back of the head and started to tell him off. Manners and proper etiquette are something else you need to learn, his master said as he turned and bowed to the two senin. Naruto scowled as his master did this. Hello, Jiraiya and Tsunade. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Fukui Harumasa, and I'm a retired samurai from Iron Country. The little shrimp you see next to me is Naruto Uzumaki, who is my student. When Naruto tried to say something, he got hit in the head again, which made Jiraiya and Tsunade laugh. Naruto didn't like being the center of attention, so he crossed his arms and said, it's not funny, under his breath. As soon as Jiraiya saw what path Naruto took, he stopped laughing. Sensei, I thought Naruto was at the academy to become a ninja, not a samurai? Hiruzen took out his pipe, lit it, and took a few puffs, which filled the office with the smell of tobacco. Jiraiya, this village and I both failed. Not only did the boy's hatred affect him, but I've gotten lazy in my old age, which is something I'm starting to fix. Tsunade wanted to say something, but Hiruzen stopped her with a hand. I could partly blame you, the godparents who were supposed to look after him, but I won't do that because I didn't follow through on that part of Minato's will. And before you ask, yes, he knows where he comes from, as does everyone in this village. Jiraiya and Tsunade looked at Naruto and jumped when they saw that he had a cold look in his eyes. With red eyes and clenched fists, he said, I had godparents the whole time. So, his darkness has come back to life. Maybe it's time to step up his training so he'll be ready for the future. Shizun, who was holding Tauntin, looked at Tsunade in shock because she had never heard this before. Tsunade, she asked with a shaky breath, why did you leave Minato and Kashina's child? Tsunade looked at Naruto and felt sad because she knew she could have given Naruto a better life. Okay, I was upset. First I lose Dan and Nawaki, and then two people I looked up to. The painful memories made the slug sage cry. I just couldn't take it anymore, and I left. It seems I got caught up in my depression and didn't realize that both Minato and Kashina's souls were in their child. She went to Naruto and got down on one knee. Can you ever forgive me, Naruto? Inside, Naruto was torn. His godmother's emotions showed that she still cared and wanted to make things right, but Naruto's anger contradicted this and flatly denied it. Luckily, Harumasa stopped the situation from getting worse. Give Naruto some time, Tsunade. After what happened yesterday, he's still having trouble with himself. Fukui looked at his student and patted him on the shoulder. The same goes for you, Jiraiya, he said. Go back to our training ground and meditate. I'll be there soon. Naruto bowed and went to the door, but before he left, he took one last look at his godparents. He opened the door and closed it quietly behind him as he shook his head in sadness. He didn't even care to hear Jiraiya try to comfort a crying Tsunade. Hiruzen thought about what could be done to start making Konoha strong again. 
he closed his eyes and puffed on his pipe to help him focus on the task at hand. After a few minutes, the god of Shinobi opened his eyes and looked at Tsunade, Shizun, and Tonton. You will now run the medical program, because the way it is run now leaves a lot to be desired, he said to Jiraiya. Your spy network will now be based here in Konoha. You will both stay in the village unless you have important missions. Do you understand me? The Sani nodded, thinking of ways to try to get Naruto to forgive them. Even though neither of them spoke, Hiruzen understood the simple gesture and sent them away. Fukui, on the other hand, decided to say a few words before leaving. Tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I might remember. Involve me and I'll understand. Think about what I say, Jiraiya and Tsunade. Harumasa bowed to the Senen and the Hokage and then went back to Naruto's lesson for the day. As he walked to the training ground, Naruto heard a voice in the back of his head. Grab your anger, use it to hurt those around you, and let me go. Naruto shook his head and looked around because he thought he heard someone. When he saw that no one else had heard anything, he shrugged and kept walking toward his destination. A beast with nine tails grinned evilly in its cage, as did a black silhouette in a dark part of Naruto's mind. When it saw that Naruto was finally awake, the shadow figure's eyes turned red and it started to laugh evilly. Skip time. Almost a year has passed since Naruto began his samurai training. His training with his senses, which took two months per exercise, was done. After successfully meditating while dodging stones, Naruto was given earplugs and told to use those with the blindfold. It was hard at first because he couldn't rely on sound, but he soon learned to use his sense of touch with some key sensing to dodge the stones. The last part of Naruto's senses training was the hardest because he had to meditate and block out any feelings while dodging stones. Naruto quickly realized that this part of the training was meant to build his endurance and pain threshold for when it was time for his first samurai fight. When this part of the training was over, Naruto was introduced to Aikido, the samurai style of taijutsu. Then he understood how mean his master could be. At the end of each training session, Naruto was taken to the hospital with broken bones and internal injuries. Tsunade tried to tell Harumasa that he was being too harsh, but that quickly backfired when the samurai explained to the slug sage why he was being so harsh. Aikido was more of a defensive taijutsu that focused on throws, but it was deadly because once an enemy was down, a killing blow could be struck with a katana. Naruto learned both the defensive and offensive sides of Aikido. Now, our teacher and student are on their way to the Nara compound for Naruto's next lesson, which is about strategy. Master, will playing shogi really help me? Naruto asked with a small pout, I've been doing what you asked me to do. I know my stuff because I read about it in books. Fukui shook his head and smiled. You can read and remember, my student, but you will never master anything until you put it into practice. You don't know how horrible war is or how painful it is to kill someone you love or a fellow samurai who has been with you for what seems like an eternity. When Naruto heard his master's sad voice, he became worried about him. Is that why, master, you're a retired samurai? Fukui just smiled and patted Naruto on the head. It happened a long time ago, but the memories still haunt me. Naruto stopped when he looked into his master's eyes and saw that they were full of sadness, pain, and most of all, loneliness, just like his own eyes were before he became a warrior. Fukui looked at Naruto and sighed to himself because he saw himself in the boy. Naruto, you don't know how much you make me think of myself when I was younger. I used to be a carefree child like you, always wondering about what was out there, until Mifune showed me the right way. I worked hard to train and study like you did, and then that terrible day came. Harumasa took a deep breath and thought about what Naruto would do when he killed for the first time. To kill is to lose your innocence. To kill is only the first step to becoming a true samurai one who uses death as a guide. My student, keep that innocence until you feel ready. Naruto and Fukui didn't take long to get to the compound where they were greeted warmly and shown to Shikaku's house. When the guard knocked on the door, Shikaku's wife, Yoshino Nara, was there to greet them with a smile. Oh, Uzumaki-san and Harumasa-san, my husband told me that you would be coming. Come in, please. As they entered, they took off their sandals and put them by the door. Yoshino asked if they wanted some tea, which they gladly accepted. Naruto looked around the house and smiled, then started to wonder if this was what it was like to live with parents. It's a pain to think that Minato's boy would be so calm. The clan leader thought proudly, I can't help but feel happy for the kid because he's finally getting the attention he deserves. He then joined the two, but he didn't meditate. 
Yoshino, who had just returned with the tea, was surprised by how calm Naruto and his master were. She quickly shook it off and set the cups and saucers on the table in front of them. Naruto and his master thanked her without breaking their meditation in the least, which completely confused the two Naras. Shikaku cleared his throat after a few minutes, which woke the two of them up from their meditation. Harumasa-san, you wanted to talk to me about something? The person smiled and took a sip of his tea. Yes, I wish my student would come here every day after training to learn how to play shogi with your boy. This will help him not only with his strategy, but also with his people skills. Shikaku couldn't help but wonder where the old Naruto went as he looked at Naruto, who was sipping his tea and staying calm. Shikaku stood up and motioned for Naruto to follow him. Come, Naruto, and I'll introduce you to my son, Shikamaru, he said. Naruto looked at Fukui as he put down his teacup and said, Master Harumasa, may I be excused? Fukui just nodded and said, Thanks, Master. Then Naruto got up and followed Shikaku, while Yoshino gave the retired samurai a puzzled look. How did you make Minato's son so quiet? Just a year ago, he was running around trying to get everyone's attention. The old man smiled and took another sip of his tea. When he had finished, he put the cup back on the saucer and gave a shrug. I may be his master, but Naruto has become what he is because he wants to. Mifune, who was my teacher, once said, the art of living is not to hold on to a particular mood of happiness, but to let happiness change without being disappointed by the change. Happiness, like a child, needs to grow up. Yoshino scratched her head as she tried to figure out what the wise words meant, but she couldn't. With a huff, she crossed her arms and went back to the kitchen to start another pot of tea just in case. Yoshino muttered, stupid samurai and their wise sayings, which made Fukui shake his head and laugh. Shikamaru opened his bedroom door when he heard his father's voice on the other side. He was surprised to see a calm Naruto, but his surprise went away when Shikaku started to explain what Naruto's master had asked him to do. Shikamaru, being a typical Nara, thought the whole thing was troublesome, but he let Naruto in anyway. When the door closed, Shikaku went back downstairs to give the kids some privacy. Shikamaru decided to make small talk while he was setting up the shogi board. I like looking at clouds. What do you like to do? When Naruto thought about the question, he realized something quickly. I don't really have one because most of the time I just train. Shikamaru stopped, looked at Naruto, and said in a tired voice, Samurai are so troublesome, but you should really think about getting a hobby. Thanks, Naruto nodded, and he decided to keep that in mind so he could ask Fukui about it later. After a short, awkward pause, Naruto changed the subject. Naruto said, so, while looking at the shogi board. What are the rules of shogi? I've read about it in the library, but I've never tried to play it. Shikamaru sighed and started to explain how the game worked. Even though it took five minutes, they were soon playing. Shikamaru won the first three games quickly. The next two, though, made him nervous because he almost lost. Naruto was upset that he didn't win, but he remembered his master's lesson on patience and decided not to give up. Naruto got better and better with each game, to the point where Shikamaru took longer to choose his moves. Between games, Naruto and Shikamaru got to know each other better through small talk. One that grew after the last game was played and three hours had passed. Shikamaru grinned and said, Checkmate. Naruto looked at the board and started to figure out what was going on. Here is where Naruto realized that he hadn't covered his right flank, which in a real battle would have killed him. Naruto smiled and put out his own hand, which the Nara shook. Great game, I was almost able to beat you. Maybe we can try again the next day? Shikamaru nodded and began to put away the game. Yes, and it's hard to find good opponents in the academy anyway. Naruto stood up and bowed to show respect. Thank you. Shikamaru-sama. The clan heir looked Naruto in the eyes as he stood up to put the game back on the bookshelf behind him. From now on, you can call me Shika. Shikamaru gave a shrug. All of my troublesome friends do it. Naruto knew what it meant, and he was so happy because Shikamaru was his first real friend. The morning after. Naruto went to his master's shop in the morning, as he did every day, and was ready to train. As he walked into the shop and heard the bell, Fukui came out of the back room with a smile on his face. Naruto knew that smile meant trouble, so he avoided it. Good news, my student. The Hokage and I talked about how well you were doing, and he gave you permission to start D-rank missions. You were going to help a farmer plant his crops today. Naruto took a worry-filled look at his kimono. 
shouldn't I put on something else so I don't get my kimono dirty? Fukui faked a gasp of surprise. Ah. You were right, and I should have known better. Harumasa turned around and took the samurai armor that would fit his student off the shelf and put it on the counter. You'll work on that all day, and after your mission, we'll keep training you in Aikido. Now go. Time is running out. I talk too much. Fukui laughed when Naruto mumbled something. After putting on his armor, which looked like Hashirama's, he went with Harumasa to do today's job. When they got there, the farmer greeted them and was about to give Naruto tools to work with, but Fukui stopped him. My student doesn't need any tools to do his work. He will do it by hand. The farmer was shocked and worriedly looked at the Uzumaki heir and asked, Are you sure, sir, that he is just a young child? Ah, but he is the child of hard work and a samurai in training. Fukui smiled as he looked at Naruto. Go on, Naruto, do what you have to do. Naruto sighed and decided not to argue. He went to a nearby field and started hand plowing the rows. As the hard job went on, Naruto's hands cramped up and his fingernails broke off and started bleeding, but he never flinched or complained. It was a sight that surprised the old farmer. The farmer asked, shouldn't you be helping your student Harumasa-san? The person in question shook his head and waved his hand at Naruto, which meant to wait and see. Naruto took a short break in the field and looked at his bloody hands. He was more determined than ever after seeing it. It may be hard work, but with this blood. I promise to never leave the warrior's path. My cup is still empty because I still have a lot to learn. Your master is lying to you, he hates you, and when the time comes, he will betray you. Use my power to get back at me. Let me go. Naruto scratched his brow and shook his head in confusion. What was that voice? Ignore that, and get back to work. The shadow person looked at the beast in front of him and laughed. You can try to change the mind of your container. Kayubi, but there will come a time when his mind will be so broken that we can take over. Kayubi growled and slammed his tails against the cage. I am a beast of unimaginable destruction, and I have no patience. I'll show my container where he's going wrong. The shadow figure shrugged and went back to where he was in Naruto's mind. And you've been sealed for more than 50 years because you couldn't wait. As the figure went back to its home, all that could be heard was the angry roar of the Kayubi. Naruto wiped the sweat off his forehead, stood up, and arched his back. A few cracks came from his back, which made Naruto smile. It took five hours to till, plant, and water the huge field. When Naruto went to greet his master, the farmer was impressed with his work and told him he had done a good job. Naruto told him to keep the money and give it to people in need or to an orphanage, which made the client even happier. As the teacher and the student went to the training ground, Fukui saw a figure that had been following the student for almost a year leave. Start point. As Danzo waited for his agent to give him the report on Naruto, he tapped his cane on the floor in a slightly impatient way. As of now, the Warhawk was a little worried because Naruto was getting better and better, but he didn't pay much attention to this because Danzo didn't trust Samurai. Even worse, Sai disappeared all of a sudden, which made the root leader wonder if he had been the mole the whole time. The more Danzo thought about it, the more likely it became that something happened on the mission to the Iron Country. Sai didn't tell Hiruzen about this mission in the report she gave him. But a shunshin pulled him away from his thoughts. Send in. The Warhawk gave the order. The agent got down on one knee, and his calm voice echoed off the damp stone walls. Danzo-sama, Naruto has kept training, but I'm afraid his master has been able to tell we're here the whole time. And do you have proof of this? Danzo asked with a raised eyebrow. No, sir, I just have a feeling. Danzo narrowed his eyes and turned his back on his agent. I see that Jiraiya taking the seals off of you has made you feel something. It's a shame, but I can't do anything about it because Hiruzen is watching everything I do. Keep doing what you're doing, our time will come. Hello, Mr. Danzo. As soon as the agent left, Danzo started to worry again. If Harumasa could find his agents, what would happen to Naruto? Baha I'm just thinking too much. Whether Konoha is found or not, I will soon be in charge of it. Places to learn. Naruto threw a punch at his master, who easily caught it. Fukui then lifted Naruto up with his shoulder and threw him to the ground. Naruto turned while he was flying and was able to stay upright, so he could use both hands. Again, Naruto attacked, but he faked with his right fist and tried to give Harumasa a quick jab with his left, but it missed. 
His master caught the punch with both hands and then kicked Naruto in the stomach. The blow broke his armor, but it kept him from passing out. This is when Naruto was put on the defensive. Fukui jumped over Naruto's master's legs when he rolled out of the way of a punch and tried to kick out his master's legs. Naruto got back on his feet, blocked a punch, and tried to throw his master over his shoulder. Harumasa fought back by using his strength to get out of the block and grab Naruto's outstretched hand, which broke the block. When Fukui's fist hit Naruto in the face and broke his nose, he quickly saw darkness and heard his bone break. Before Naruto could hit the ground, the old samurai caught him and smiled at the boy in his arms. Even though the fight only lasted five minutes, it showed how much Naruto had grown. Don't worry, my student, because tomorrow is a fresh start. Harumasa then took Naruto to the hospital like he was a bride. He knew Naruto would be able to make the long trip to Iron Country soon, but he had a bad feeling in his stomach that a storm was coming. A storm that would cause change, a storm that would change his student for good and make him into the person he was meant to be. As the sun went down in Konoha, everyone was getting ready to go home and rest. However, if you passed by a certain training ground, you could hear a muffled thump. If you went looking for the sound, you would find Naruto Uzumaki punching and kicking trees with his bare hands and feet while Fukui smiled and watched. Naruto had been training for six months, and he was getting better at a very fast rate. Because he changed what he ate, he was the size of a normal eight-year-old, but his mind was a different story because he had to read so much. Naruto worked hard for six months to learn how to use and keep his key so he could do many different things. While meditating, he learned how to improve his speed, make his Aikido stronger, find targets around him, and know when they would attack, among other things. During those months, Naruto went to the hospital a lot because of broken bones, concussions, and other injuries, but he never gave up. He learned from his mistakes and started on the path to knowing thyself. Fukui, on the other hand, told Naruto that in order to fully know thyself, a lot of emotional pain had to happen. Naruto was still doing his Aikido katas on the tree in front of him with a hard look in his eyes. When a punch or kick landed, some of the bark would peel off because ki was added to each strike. Since Naruto began, many hours had passed, and Fukui had had enough. You can stop, my student. It's been a long day, but you've improved so much that I can't believe it. Fukui said this in a wise way. If you keep getting better like this, we might be able to go to Iron Country sooner than we thought. Naruto smiled, wiped the sweat off his forehead, and then turned to his master and bowed to him. Hi, Master Harumasa. I'm excited to travel and meet the person you call master. Naruto scratched his chin, which was a new thing he did when he was confused or thinking. Do you think that your master can train me? The old samurai shrugged and then ruffled Naruto's hair, making the blonde laugh. Perhaps, but tell me, my student. Do you feel a sense of dread in the air, or the winds of change? Naruto looked at Harumasa with confusion, then closed his eyes and calmed his senses as he had been taught. After a few moments, he opened them and made a sad face. What's wrong with my key? It feels sad and far away. That's what a warrior's intuition is. Fukui frowned and put a hand on Naruto's left shoulder to comfort him. We can feel that something is going to change, but we don't know when it will happen. Harumasa then stooped down to Naruto's level, smiled at him, and looked at him with warm eyes. Remember, my student, to always go with your gut. Use it to get ready better and, most importantly, to save the people you care about. Promise this to me. Naruto nodded firmly and said, Hi master, it will be done. His eyes were full of determination. Fukui got up and shoved his student toward the gates of Konoha. Go now, you've earned a good night's rest. After Naruto told him he was grateful, he started walking home. As he did this, Fukui could tell that the figure he had been watching for so long was about to move. The retired samurai walked right up to the blank masked Anbu with a smile on his face. He didn't make a sound. I didn't see him even move. The Anbu thought this as he jumped back in shock and almost fell off the branch he was on. Please tell your master that nothing he has planned will happen. Your master's carelessness has caused their trouble, and that carelessness will also bring about their demise. Fukui went missing again, but this time he was behind the Anbu and putting his katana back in its sheath. Once the blade was in the sheath, the Anbu screamed in pain and held the stump where his right arm used to be. Think of that as payment for staying with your master, who keeps you from seeing the truth that you don't want to see. 
The Anbu left in a shunshun, which made Harumasa smile because he knew his student was ready to move on. Even so, the winds of change were coming quickly. Root Base. The office of Danzo. Danzo was waiting for his daily report, and when the agent showed up later than usual, he started to worry. As soon as the Warhawk saw that his agent was missing an arm, his worry turned into anger and, even though he wouldn't say it, some fear. What the heck does this mean? The agent stuttered out his report while holding his bleeding stump. I'm sorry, D. Danzo-sama, but Harumasa found me. He. He told me that your plan wouldn't work. He knows, Danzo-sama. H. He knows, Danzo-sama. The agent took a moment to think about what Fukui had said. Is this plan a good idea? Mr. Danzo. Is this really for the village's good? Danzo growled and slammed his cane on the ground, which caused the bottom to fall off and the hidden blade to show. You have the nerve to ask me why. It was here that he started to remember what the old samurai had said, and he began to believe him. The agent had already decided. Why yes a euro and when I die, it will be the end of your evil ways. Danzo, I will meet you in hell. Let's meet in. Danzo quickly cut off the man's head and spat on the body before telling his loyal agents to clean up the mess. The agent couldn't say anything else. Take this trash away from my sight and make sure that his body is never found. Two agents bowed and did what they were told. They didn't say anything, they just did it. Danzo turned to his desk and saw a map of Konoha with red circles and roots for his troops written in red. So, Harumasa knew all along that someone was watching Naruto. Danzo said, and then he laughed. It doesn't matter, since he doesn't know my final plan. Oh, yes, once the Uchiha and Jinchuriki are killed, the roots will grow up from the ground and take over the big tree. Danzo was sitting at his desk and didn't see a black rat run out of his room. The rat used the shadows to get away. A few minutes later, Sai let the rat bleed out on an empty scroll, which made a report for him. After he finished reading it, he turned around to face the 250x root who were sitting in an empty part of the base. Donzo's game has been going on for far too long. Sai got going. Now that you were unsealed and saw who the man really was, you made a promise, just like I did, to stop the Warhawk's bad behavior. And now, Sai said with a smile as he held up the scroll. Now that we have proof, we can do what we want without getting in trouble. But shouldn't we tell Hokage-sama what's going on? An old agent spoke up out of worry. Sai moved his head no, that's a good question, but no, because Danzo would find out what our plans are then. Who knows where Danzo's eyes and ears are? The former agent started to murmur, yes, which made Sai smile. So, I ask you, my friends, when the time comes, are we ready to do what we've been looking for for so long? freedom. The burning will of fire in all. The agents sang together, and Sai finished the song for them. And because we broke the rules, the root will fall. Having Naruto. Naruto was too tired when he got home to walk up to the master bedroom. He stumbled over to the couch in the family room, fell on it, and went to sleep right away. He didn't sleep for long, though, because he woke up in an odd place a euro, a sewer, of all things. Torches were used to light the place, but they didn't give off enough light, so the room was dark. Pipes that ran along parts of the ceiling and sometimes leaked led to a big cage with a seal on it. Naruto stopped for a moment and looked at the cage. He knew right away where he was. I'm in my mindscape now. Huh, I didn't know I could change this until I read those books. Naruto thought of a green meadow with rolling hills, lots of flowers and trees, and birds and animals running around. Sad to say, Nothing happened that confused Naruto. Before he could think about it more, he heard a deep laugh coming from the cage. Mortal, darkness still lives in you. The animal said with a small grunt. Come on, don't you want to get back at the people who stare at you and talk about you behind your back? Just tear the seal. Go ahead. Leave me alone. Why you're that voice in my head? Naruto's eyes widened at the last three words. Wait, the only person I know is in me is... The Kyubi showed himself by first showing his glowing, red, wild-looking eyes, then his huge head with its huge canines. You're right, kid. Kyubi got in the way. I am the great Kyubi no Kitsune. I killed your sad parents, and you will set me free. Naruto didn't know what to do at first, but after taking a deep breath to calm himself, he walked up to the cage and looked at the biju without being afraid. His eyes were emotionless, just like Fukui's. 
Kayubi, you have a lot of anger, but anger can be tame. Even though it seems like you always nag about wanting to be free, you lack patience. The Kayubi's head hit the bars, but Naruto didn't lose his balance. Patience is not something I have. I am a beast of destruction that can cause unimaginable damage. Why don't you come into my cage and see for yourself, puny human? No thanks, I'll pass. With a smirk, Naruto said. But Naruto's smile went away as he began to pace back and forth and hum a small tune. He stopped again about a minute later and looked the biju in the eyes. Your hatred is misplaced, Kayubi. You hate people because Madara sealed you a long time ago, and that's why you hate them. You will find that I am not like the containers you have used before. I'll talk to you, make you feel wanted, and do whatever I have to, even if it kills me, to get your attention. When Naruto heard clapping to his right, he turned around and saw himself, but with red glowing eyes and teeth that looked like fangs. Oh, well done, my other half. That was a really great speech, but Kayubi is a very stubborn beast, as you can see. The thing pointed behind him to a black chained door. Would you like to come to my domain to talk about how annoying this beast is? Naruto looked at his other half, who had a calm face and spoke in a low, guttural voice. Other half. May I ask who you really are? The other Naruto smiled, and his red eyes briefly glowed before going back to how they were before. I'm here to help you, Yami. He made a bow, and then he started walking toward Naruto. I promise we'll see each other again. When your mind is weak and about to break. I'll show you what it means to get even and give Kayubi what he's been wanting for a long time. When Kayubi's tails suddenly crashed into and around the cage, Naruto turned to look at the beast. This gave Yami plenty of time to do what he wanted to do. Naruto tried to defend himself, but he couldn't because he had been distracted. Yami smiled evilly as he grabbed Naruto's head, which made Naruto remember how the villagers looked at him and hated him when they were kids. Before things got worse, Naruto gave his other half a snap kick, which sent him into a wall nearby. Even though Yami was firmly stuck in the stone, she was not hurt in any way. In fact, the evil half started to laugh when he felt a little bit of pain. Even more so when Naruto shook his head in an attempt to get rid of the memories. Yami stopped his crazy cackling long enough to pull himself up from the wall. This is just the start, my other half, he said. Yami said as he began to turn into what looked like pieces of black ash. You will see that getting revenge is the right thing to do and that going into the dark is always the right way to go. Kayubi, maybe you'll get out of that cage. Naruto shook his head again as he watched Yami leave and then looked at the biju in front of him with his arms crossed. You won't fool me. The people in the village know what they did wrong. Oh, but they want you to think that. In their eyes, you are still that demon child, and I'm your way to heaven. Kayubi said with a wild grin on his face. This is your last chance. Let me go or face what will happen to you. When Naruto had had enough, he left his mindscape. But as he left, the two people in his head made a silent promise. They would try, and they would make sure Naruto did what they told him to do. Soon, it was morning, and Naruto started his morning routine. He went outside and sat in the small garden he had planted to think. Naruto knew that what happened last night wasn't a dream, and he also knew that he needed a calm mind to beat his other half. Nothing to bother you, nothing. Don't trick yourself, mortal. The closer you get to the edge, the more you try and the harder we push you. You'll fall, and there won't be anyone to catch you. Kayubi tried to control Naruto, but Naruto didn't let him. I wanted to be nice to Kayubi, but you made me. Until you agree to work with me, these chains will remind you that, in my mind, I am the boss. Chains were quickly wrapped around the Kayubi's tails and legs, just like Kashina Uzumaki's, and then pulled tight, slamming the biju onto the wet stone floor. A clicking sound was heard, and then the mighty biju roared in pain. The wet fox was shocked more often the more Kayubi fought. Curse you human being. I'll find a way out of these bonds, and when I do, Kayubi didn't finish his threat, but Naruto didn't care. After another 10 minutes of uninterrupted meditation, Naruto got up and went inside to make himself breakfast. He then brushed his teeth and changed back into his regular clothes. Naruto put his bakken on the right side as the last thing he did before going to Harumasa's emporium. Harumasa's marketplace. When the bell rang, it meant that Naruto was there. Not long after that, the old samurai walked to the front of the store and could feel that Naruto was upset. 
he knew what had happened. So, it looks like your dark side has finally found you. Harumasa said it was sad. Naruto scratched the back of his neck and laughed nervously before asking, Hi, but why are you so sad, master? I calmly talked to Kayubi and had a small run-in with my Yami side. Then, this morning, I used my mother's chakra chains to tie up the annoying fox. Harumasa opened and closed his eyes in surprise before he began to laugh. After a while, he regained control of himself and smiled as he put one of his calloused hands on Naruto's shoulders. My student, you never stop surprising me. The retired samurai said this with a smile. How about a cup of tea before we move on to the next training step? Naruto stared at Fukui in shock, almost forgetting about the tea. You really mean that? Yes, my student, you will finally start to learn how to use my sword style. Fukui stopped him by giving him a nod. I know it's too soon to teach you, but I've already pushed you past what I was taught. Why? Naruto rubbed the side of his chin. My student, you are the person who will make the world a better place, but first you need to get to know yourself. It will be a long journey for you, but as long as you remember what I've taught you, it will be full of excitement and personal growth. Fukui answered, and then he began to walk toward the door. Stop talking. Let's go get some tea. Master and student smiled as they walked out of the store and down the street to the tea shop. As they walked, Naruto noticed how happy their eyes were and how warm their tea felt. Kayubi couldn't help but snarl because this was a huge setback for his and Yami's plan to control people. Places to learn. Even though Anko came to see them soon after they sat down, they had a great time at the tea shop. Even though Naruto has spent a lot of time in the village, the snake mistress was surprised by how much he had changed. Naruto quickly told her that he was still the same person he used to be. Anko wished Naruto luck in his training with a seductive smile and a kiss on the cheek. Then she went to the counter, got her dango, and skipped away. Fukui couldn't help but laugh when he saw Naruto hold Anko's cheek after she kissed it. He had a blush on his face that would make a certain Hyuga proud. Not long after that, both the teacher and the student finished their tea and went to the training grounds. But as they were leaving, Shikaku and Inoichi saw them, which made the two clan leaders grin at each other. With a nod, they both went back home because they knew what they had to do. Fukui told Naruto to sit in the Siza position when they got to the training ground, and then he started to talk about his sword style. Muse Jikidan Asian Rai, a sword style based on Iaido, has two sets of techniques that you must master before you can learn the more advanced ones. The first set is called the Siza no Biyu, and the second set is called the Tatehiza no Biyu. For now, we'll focus on the Siza. Why teach Siza first if you'll probably be standing when you face an enemy? Don't we just rush in and attack? Naruto said while he thought and scratched his chin. That's how shinobi fight, not how we do it, my student. Fukui gave the order. We are samurai, and as such, we follow Bushido. Because of this, we carefully plan our attacks. Some even happened while I was enjoying a nice cup of green tea with a hint of jasmine. After a moment of thinking, Harumasa finally understood what was going on, which made him smile. Oh, I see, so that's why you told me to work on my key sensing. The old samurai nodded, and then he explained what the Siza no Biyu was and how it worked. There were 11 techniques in total. Mei, which means forward, is when you can tell that a person sitting in front of you wants to hurt you. Before they strike, you cut them between the arm and the face. Miji, or right, means that your opponent is sitting to your left and is facing the same way you are. Again, you cut them between the arm and the face before they hit you. Hidari, which means left, is when a player sits to your right and faces the same way you do. It's like the strike in Mei or Miji. Yushiro, which means back, is when a player sits behind you and faces the same way you do. It's like the strike in Mei or Miji. Yegaki, also called eight multiple barriers, is used when the opponent is in front of you. This method has more than one cut. The first isn't good enough, so you move after your opponent as they fall backwards and cut them down. Since this cut doesn't kill and they try to cut your shin while you're on the ground, you counter their cut and beat them. Ukenagashi, also called, reviving and praying, is when your opponent attacks from your left, but you parry and cut down on their neck and or shoulder. Kaishiku, or seconds, is when your opponent is sitting about 2 meters in front of you and facing left. When a person does seppuku, you cut their neck. Sukakomi is when someone attacks you from the front, but you step back to parry the attack. The first cut isn't good enough, so you move toward your opponent while they fall backwards and then cut them down. 
when an opponent is to your right, this is called, moonlight, or, sukikage. Just as they are about to attack from the Jodan position, you cut both of their forearms. The opponent falls backwards while you move forward to cut them down. Oikaze, which means, pursuit, is exactly what it sounds like, you chase after a cowardly opponent and kill them. Nukiuchi, which means, suddenly, is when you sense that the person sitting in front of you wants to hurt you and cut them down. Fukui showed Naruto the right way to do each as they were being talked about, but in slow motion. He also said that the sword positions would be taught when it came to frontal attacks and standing moves. Naruto practiced each kata between his other workouts for the rest of the day. Naruto used weights on his wrists and ankles to do exercises. Fukui told him as he was putting them on that he couldn't take them off until he was a full-fledged samurai. Our blonde-haired hero got it and got to work right away. At the end of the day, Naruto had a good understanding of the first techniques, but he knew he still had a long way to go before he could use them perfectly. The morning after. Naruto went to Harumasa's emporium in the morning, just like he did every day. When he walked in, he saw someone else talking to his master, though. Since he started playing shogi with Shikamaru, he has become close friends with this person. It's good to see you again, Shikaku-san, Naruto said with a bow. Naruto, you don't have to be so formal. But I guess it's not your fault because you chose to be a troublemaker. At the end, the clan leader said something under his breath and quickly waved his hand in the air. Anyway, my son wants to play you again sometime because he says you've become a very tough opponent. Shika keeps bringing up how I beat him last weekend. The leader of the clan smiled and said, of course, it would be too hard not to. After all, not many people can say, I beat a Nara at what they do best. Naruto got a little red in the face and said, it was all a plan, Shikaku-san. My master told me to expect nothing and be ready for anything. Fukui gave his student a nod when he heard what he said. But it also made him think of something that was long overdue. Naruto. Shikaku has been kind enough to invite us all to dinner with the other clan leaders, so there is no training today. I do want you to meet your godparents, though. Naruto let out a sigh and put his right hand over his face. Since that day in the Hokage office when he met Jiraiya and Tsunade, Naruto has avoided them and anything they do to try to get on his good side. It made the two senin feel very sad. It's been a little over a year, Naruto. Give them a chance, go to them. Fukui frowned when he saw how his student was acting. Since that day, that glass of yours has been broken, and now you need to fix it before the water runs out. Even though Naruto was interested in the floor at the moment, he had to agree with his master's wise advice. Perhaps you're right, master. As long as my dark side keeps trying, that crack will only get bigger. If it breaks, I'll lose everything I've worked for. Naruto bowed to the two adults, and as he left, Shikaku looked at Harumasa with a raised eyebrow. He's almost eight, but he talks like an adult, which is troublesome. The older samurai laughed, then leaned on a nearby counter and said, It's amazing how much you can learn from reading books since you were six, isn't it? W what? Asked the leader of the Nara clan. You made him read every book in the library. Fukui nodded and said, Hi, but he is not done yet. He gave the clan head one last look as he turned around to get a piece of armor to polish. Listen to what my student said, Shikaku-san, don't expect anything and be ready for anything. When the samurai heard this, he grabbed the armor and went to the back of the store. Shikaku left soon after, still in shock. Hospital with Naruto. Naruto went to the hospital's front desk and asked to talk to Tsunade. She led him to the slug sage's office with a smile that made people want to be around her. When Naruto got to the door, he bowed and thanked the receptionist before knocking. Who's there? On the other side, a voice said in an angry tone. This is your godson, I said. Naruto groaned. Someone was heard getting up, then there was a thump and some bad language, and then the door opened violently. Tsunade was standing there with a red mark on her forehead and sad eyes. As Naruto looked around the Spartan office, he saw three empty sake bottles on the desk and closed his eyes in sadness. I had no idea that pushing them away would hurt them so much. Listen. Tsunade-san, I know we got off to a bad start, but… Before he could finish, Tsunade dragged Naruto into the office, shut the door, and gave him a big hug. One in which Tsunade's assets were so close to his face that he couldn't help but blush. They parted soon after, each with a small smile on his or her face. I stand by what I said at the Hokage office more than a year ago, Gaki. 
I know you may never forgive me fully for what I did, and I'm okay with that. As she sat down at the desk and picked up an empty sake bottle, Tsunade said. After she waved it around for a while, Tsunade looked back at Naruto. I thought I would give up this stuff, but after drowning my sorrows in it for so long. Tsunade let out another sigh and put the bottle back on the desk. Seeing her like this broke Naruto's heart. She lied to you, so why don't you open the seal and... The rattle of the chains in the cage scared the biju. R. You will be quiet, Kayubi. I promise you that you will be free of your hate one day. Soon after that, Naruto cut the link and smiled at his godmother. Tsunade, godmother, you are right that I can never fully forgive you, but that doesn't mean we have to go our separate ways. Naruto walked over to the desk and pushed the sake bottles into the trash can close by. One of the bottles broke and made a shattering sound. What I mean is, why not help each other? I help you stop drinking sake, and you teach me something that will help me on my way to Iron Country. You make me think of Dan and Nawaki so much. Tsunade smiled at her godson, got up from her desk, and pointed in the direction of the door. Come on, let's go meet Jiraiya so he can teach you, too. Knowing that you are a samurai, we can't teach you any shinobi skills, but we can help you with one thing. And what's that? Naruto asked, raising an eyebrow. Tsunade ruffled Naruto's hair and said, to learn how to fight against someone like us. Naruto's eyes were lit up with excitement. He had sparred with Fukui for years, but now he would finally get to see how different shinobi fighting was from his own. The slug sage shed a few tears when she saw Naruto's eyes light up. She knew that things were getting better. She got her godson back at last. Having Jiraiya. Like Tsunade, the desk was full of sake bottles, and the floor was full of papers. Jiraiya's red, puffy eyes and dark circles under his eyes showed that he hadn't slept much or at all. He knew how much he had let Naruto down, and after being avoided for over a year, it caught up with him. When the toads asked Jiraiya why he was so sad last year, he told them with a heavy heart. Even though they were so angry that they threatened to break the contract, Jiraiya was able to talk them out of it. How can I make things right with you, Naruto? As he looked at the bottle of rice alcohol in his hands, the wise man thought. The senin drank the rest of the sake in the bottle and then dropped it on his desk. Soon after, he fell over and hit his head on the floor. Even though Jiraiya was drunk, he didn't miss the knock on his door. Come in. Tsunade was the first one to walk in, but before the toad sage could say anything, his eyes lit up with hope when he saw his godson. Naruto just couldn't help shaking his head in shock. He thought Jiraiya couldn't be any worse, but he was wrong on so many different levels. It's time to make things right, godfather. Just like I told Tsunade, I'll help you if you help me. That's great. I can teach you how to do things your father did, and you can. No. You should know by now that I am a samurai, godfather. I follow the path of the warrior, not the path of the shinobi. Naruto cut in with a firm voice. The senin sputtered, and while he was drunk, he tried to change Naruto's mind. After a few minutes of this, Naruto had enough. He nodded to Tsunade, who took one of the sake bottles from the desk and smashed it over Jiraiya's head. Naruto put his hand over his mouth to keep his laughter from coming out. As she fixed Jiraiya up and got the alcohol out of his system, Tsunade was grinning. After the process was done, the toad sage woke up with a clear head. We appreciate it, Tsunadeheim. Jiraiya said, you'll never forgive me, huh? He then frowned and looked at his godson. Not completely, Naruto shrugged. But if you help me, maybe one day I will. The toad sage nodded and then looked at Tsunade to see what she would say. After a short sigh, she told him that they would teach him how to fight a shinobi while he helped them solve one of their problems. Then Jiraiya did what he always did and asked Naruto a simple question. Can you help me write my Icha Icha? When Naruto saw one of those books in the library, he knew what they were. He later found out that it was someone's secret stash. Of course, Naruto threw everyone in the trash right away. That's just smut. I won't help you write that, no. I have a better offer, though. At first, Jiraiya sighed, but when the other offer was made, he was ready to listen. Okay, Gaki, fire. When I get the chance, I'll help you with your spy network. After giving it some thought, the two senin nodded to show they agreed. Shortly after that, Naruto's godparents took him to a training ground where he would start his ordeal. Two figures disappeared at the same time. One disappeared into the ground, and the other left in a shunshin. 
Start point. The agent was on his knees in front of Danzo. Even though the seals had been broken, the agent's tone remained emotionless. As you feared, Danzo Sama, the boy has once again sided with his godparents. What do you want, sir? Danzo clenched his hands and slammed them on the desk. Damn. Now there are three people who always watch Naruto. There must be a way to reach that spoiled brat. The agent looked at Danzo and said, The boy is alone as he walks the streets in the morning, Danzo Sama. The warhawk hummed and smiled a little while later. Good, good, and with how long he trains, this gives us a lot of room to move. Danzo took a moment to think. Does Hiruzen know what our plan is? I don't know who you were, sir, but Sai knew everything about you. Danzo nodded and looked at the plans in front of him. We'll get ready tomorrow morning, and then the big tree will come down, he said. However you want, Danzo Sama. The agent then bowed and walked away. Just as Danzo was about to lean back in his chair, he saw something out of the corner of his eye and acted quickly. What he stepped on turned to ink, which made him frown. He now knew who the mole was. You made a mistake when you turned against me, Sai. And now you will see what happens to people who do. With a flick of the finger, 40 root agents surrounded Danzo and knelt down in front of their leader. Bring Sai to me, because he and I need to. Talk. The disappearance of the agents made the war hawk laugh to himself. He thought that even if his plan didn't work, Konoha would be so weak that other villages could easily wipe it off the map. In Iron Country, somewhere. The head of a person floated up from the ground so they could talk to the person they worked for. Someone was sitting on a log next to a small fire and thinking about the past. The fact that he lived in a snowy place didn't bother him at all. Has the boy been found? The person said that his voice sounded rough and old. I did it because my master asked me to, and his training is going well. The boy looked like he would be tasty enough to eat. The other half of the figure stopped what was going on. Ignore my partner. Zetsu White said. My master hopes that you'll keep your end of the deal. Before adding a stick to the fire, the person by the fire laughed and gave a small chuckle. Don't worry, I'll do what you ask, but I'll test the boy myself first. Mifune was a stupid fool, and I'll make sure Iron Country turns into the country it should be. The figure fell back into the ground, making the person by the fire laugh and shake his head. You are an interesting person, Zetsu, very interesting. The person then gave a wicked grin and said, Oh, yes, I'll enjoy putting the boy to the test myself. Maybe I'll take away what he loves so much first, but first. The person took a piece of paper and a pen out of his cloak, then wrote a letter on the paper. After that, he got up and went to his tent nearby to get one specific thing, a carrier pigeon. He took it out of the cage and put the small coated letter inside the small cylinder on the pigeon's leg before letting it fly to its destination. As he watched it fly into the snowy sky, the man turned back to the fire and couldn't help but think about his past. Evening. Home of the Serutobi clan. The Hokage's house was where all the clan leaders and their children met. Shikamaru was excited to see the blonde samurai again, while the other clan children were confused about why they were all there. Their parents only told them that they would be going to a special dinner. But they had no idea that they were about to meet the last Uzumaki. As the guests talked, Hiruzen and his two students were in his private study, where they were sealed off so no one would bother them. I'm glad you and Naruto are making up. How did he do in the fight, if I may ask? Even though we were sparring, he wouldn't use his Bakken on an ally, Tsunade said with a smile in response to Hiruzen's question. Other than that, he was very good at picking up the sneaky tricks Shinobi use. I do agree. Jiraiya said, I don't get it, and then he scratched his head as he remembered what Naruto had told him. I still can't believe the Gaki read almost the whole Konoha library in a year and a half. Hiruzen almost choked on the smoke he had just taken in, but after a short coughing fit, it was fine. Wait, what? I know, we were surprised too when he told us, she said. Tsunade said, and at the end she let out a small laugh. Anyway, can we get to the point of being here? The smoke was still in the Sandame's lungs when he cleared his throat again. Thanks to my spy in route, I know that Danzo is trying to start something like a coup, but he doesn't know who he will try to take over. I'm sending him on a long-term mission right now because some root broke into my house in the afternoon. It looks like Danzo found out what was going on with his moles. Tsunade and Jiraiya laughed at this, but they started to worry, especially about one person. What about Naruto? Wouldn't he be the main target? 
They told him how worried they were, which made him nod. Hi, that's probably true, but with my own Anbu and Harumasa Dono watching him, I know Danzo wouldn't try a risky move on him. Tsunade was happy, but she also knew what she needed to do. Sensei, I'll keep the hospital on high alert because you never know what could happen. I'll send out my summons all over Konoha, and if something comes up, they'll go away. Jiraiya said it in a calm way because he knew the situation required it. Hiruzen took the pipe out of his mouth, dumped the old tobacco into an ashtray nearby, and put the pipe back in his robes. All of this was done with a sour expression. Be careful with your tasks, I don't want Danzo to know we're watching him. Hi, teacher. After that, the Hokage was back to being his usual happy self. He turned off the seals and pointed to the door. Shall we greet Naruto and our other guests? The Senen nodded and went out with their sensei. When they got to the main floor, they saw Naruto and Fukui surrounded by the clan heirs, who were all interested in the samurai way of life. It made them laugh, and it made them laugh even more when they saw how uncomfortable Naruto looked. When he talked about Naruto, he looked around at the people around him and let a small smirk break through his calm and serious exterior. All of the heirs to the clan are here. Hanada, Hanabi, Ino, Shikamaru, Chuji, Shino, Kiba, Hana, and Sasuke. He saw one kid sitting by himself and started to wonder who that was. Pardon me for a second. As Naruto pushed his way through the crowd and walked up to the small child, he asked him politely what his name was. The answer is, Konohamaru. Naruto was happy, why are you all alone? Are you scared? The little Serutobi nodded, and then gasped when Naruto picked him up and put him on his shoulders. There, you're not so little anymore. And don't worry, I've got you, so don't be scared. Hiruzen stood far away and saw his grandson smile so big that it made the old man tear up. Naruto, you don't know what you've already done for him. Everyone calls him the honorable grandson, which is a name he hates. Hiyashi let a rare smile form on his face as he looked at Sume and the other clan heirs. Naruto was talking with the other clan heirs. It's hard to believe that Minato's son is that kid in the formal kimono. It seems like only yesterday that everyone in the village hated him and thought he was an orange-loving ramen fool. Inoichi laughed a little as he saw Ino try to grab Naruto's bakken, but he pushed her hand away in a calm way. The Yamanaka heir blushed, of course. It looks like Naruto will be a real lady killer when he gets older. At the end of what Sume said, he let out a small laugh. Difficult, but let's hope he's not as stupid when it comes to love. How often did Kashina bother Minato? Shikaku said something in response, which made some of the clan heirs laugh. I can't count them all. Shibi, who was always quiet, spoke up, and after that, the clan leaders were quiet for a while so they could watch Naruto and the others interact. Naruto answered each question to the best of his ability, but when someone bumped into his bakken, he got angry. Shikamaru finally walked up to his friend and shook his hand. Naruto, it's good to see you. You do too, Shika. Both of them smiled at each other, but Naruto stopped to reach up to his right shoulder and let a bug crawl on his finger. He looked at it for a moment and then pointed at Shino. I think this is yours, and if you want to know more about me, please just ask. Shino nodded when the bug came back to his body to tell him what it had learned. I didn't mean to hurt you, Uzumaki-sama. My hive was just interested in the chakra of your tenants. Naruto nodded and looked at the heirs to the clan. So you don't care at all that I'm keeping the Kayubi? Naruto smiled when the clan heirs shook their heads. That's good, maybe we can work out together sometime. Shikamaru raised an eyebrow and said, Uh, Naruto, you're a samurai, right? What can we learn from you? Nothing, really, because I'm not a master, Naruto shrugged. But it does help me learn how to fight against your kind and vice versa. That's nice. I found some new wolves. Kiba yelled out and raised his arms like he was holding a prize. This was a big problem that Naruto had to solve. He was finally liked by his peers, which was something that Yami and Kayubi did not like. Fukui, on the other hand, is so happy for his student that he could not be happier. This is another step toward knowing yourself. You will become a better student than I was. You have so much potential that you haven't used yet. The rest of the evening was spent eating and having fun, but these happy times would soon be replaced by fear and confusion. A storm was coming, after all. And for one boy, what would happen next would change his life for good. The sky was dark, and it started to rain on the ground that was covered in blood. 
Soon, a distant clap of thunder and a flash of lightning revealed a person in a torn Iron Country samurai outfit. A figure with a bloody face held his katana out to the side and smirked as he looked down at the dead opponent at his feet. I am the master now, and nothing will stop me from getting revenge. I will be the one to change the samurai, and I will be the one to conquer the elemental nations. No more Bushido, no more peace. The valleys will run red with the blood of my enemies, and the sky will cry when they realize the wrongs they have done. As another flash of lightning lit up the two, the figure spat on his opponent. The winner had long, blonde hair tied in a topknot, and her eyes were a cold blue. Goodbye, Harumasa. I'm grateful for everything you taught me, but I couldn't save myself from the darkness inside. Naruto gasped and broke out in a cold sweat when he woke up. He immediately put his hand on his face and took a few deep breaths to slow down his heartbeat. Then he got out of bed and went to the kitchen to get a glass of cold water. Ah, did someone have a bad dream? Kayubi teased while Yami laughed in a mean way. As Naruto drank the water, he had a frown on his face. Naruto put the cup down on the counter and went to his meditation garden to try to get rid of the horrible dream he had just had. He didn't pay any attention to the furball inside of him. Oh, so it's the silent treatment, Yami said with a wicked grin as he tried to add more nightmares. Naruto took a deep breath, which kept them away for a while. A thing that made Yami turn up his nose. I don't get you, my other half. Why don't you get back at the people who hurt you? Don't you want the blood on your fingers and that delicious coppery taste? Yami smiled and showed his big teeth. Come on, you know you want it deep down. Naruto sighed, opened his eyes, and put his right pointer finger out as a butterfly flew by. It softly landed on Naruto's finger because it could feel how calm he was. This made Naruto smile warmly. But after a short time, the butterfly changed its mind and flew away. Naruto went back to meditating after this. If a butterfly wants to feel free, it needs to spread its wings and learn to fly, Naruto said out loud, but his two tenants were close enough to hear. Naruto smiled when he realized that his mind was quiet, which made it easier for him to focus on the task at hand. Yami and Kayubi just kept looking at each other as they tried to figure out what those words really meant. Even though they didn't make much sense right now, they would come back in full force soon. In that future, the Kayubi would have to make the most important decision of his whole life. Naruto thought about what had happened since he had that dinner almost six months ago as he meditated. It took a lot of training, especially in the Caesar sword stances, and a lot of D-rank missions so he could keep looking for the answer to, know thyself. One of these missions, which Naruto didn't want to forget, happened on his birthday last month. Flashback. Naruto's eighth birthday was on October 10th. When the door was opened, a bell rang above it, and when Naruto went inside, he saw his master fixing up an old set of samurai armor. When Naruto saw that Fukui was busy, he thought twice about introducing himself like he usually does. Instead, Naruto just walked up and looked at one of the most important things a samurai needs. The ten pieces of armor were all made of bamboo, cloth, and metal that had been painted red. There was the helmet, which had metal plates on the sides that hung down. The nape guard was the name for these. The next piece was the cuirass, or chest piece. It had a bunch of red metal plates hanging down from the bottom. There was sleeve armor with hand guards and greaves or shin guards. There was also a thigh guard that was half cloth and half metal plates. 1. When Fukui saw Naruto looking at the armor, he smiled and said, I see this old armor has caught your eye, my student. Naruto nodded and smiled back. Hi master, but I thought I wouldn't get armor until I finished my training? You're right, my student, but this armor is different. Naruto tilted his head as if he didn't understand. When I was your age, this armor was mine. Naruto's eyes got bigger when he realized the day was his birthday. I can't take this as a gift. It's yours, and you earned it, not me. As he spoke, Naruto shook his head and put his hands up in a no sign. He then went behind the counter to get the armor he had worn before. Harumasa grabbed Naruto's hand as he reached out, which made the young samurai look into the eyes of his master. They were happy and felt very warm. Please, Naruto. You have far exceeded my hopes, and I want you to wear this with pride, just like I did all those years ago. After giving the armor one more look, Naruto gave in and took the gift, which made Harumasa smile. But the samurai who had retired was not done. He took a new set of clothes out from under the counter. It was a pair of light blue pants, hakama, and a dark blue robe, hitater, 
with spiral-like patterns and tan accents at the end of each sleeve, at the bottom, and up the middle. Naruto was taken aback. He was so shocked that he took the clothes with shaky hands and tears of happiness in his eyes. Fukui gave the boy a moment, then ruffled Naruto's hair and told him to change with a small laugh. Once he was done, he helped Naruto put on the armor, which took about 15 minutes. Naruto went to the back room and smiled at himself in the mirror. I hope you're looking at me, dad and mom. I bet you'd be proud of what I've become. Fukui couldn't help but cry when he saw that his old armor was being used again. Take good care of that armor, my student, because we're going to Iron Country in less than a year, or maybe even sooner if the winds of change blow in the right direction. When Naruto looked at his master, his eyes turned cold, and he gave a firm nod because he knew a storm was coming. Even though he was a little nervous, he was ready to do whatever it took to keep his village safe. Master, I may lose my innocence, but I have to do it to find out who I really am. Fukui Harumasa knew from this that his student was ready for the long journey ahead in the last part of his training to become a samurai. End of flashback. When Naruto stopped thinking about one of his memories from the past six months, he saw that several butterflies had landed on him. Naruto laughed to himself and thought that the calm air he gave off because of his key was what this meant. After another 15 minutes, Naruto opened his eyes and looked at the butterflies on him and others that were flying around. As he waved his hand to get them to leave, Naruto thought about what he had told his tenant and dark half. I'm not ready to fly yet, because my wings aren't strong enough. My glass is half full, so I have a long way to go before I can take off. Naruto stood up and arched his back, which caused it to break in several places. He then went inside to put on his armor. There was a bad feeling in the air today that made Naruto want to throw up. But he held his stomach and went to his armor rack, where he started putting on the pieces. As he did this, he thought about the aura and couldn't help but frown because he knew that today would be the day that all innocence would be lost. After putting on his armor and putting his bakken on his right side, Naruto went to the place where the aura was strongest. Even though the sun was starting to rise over Konoha, it didn't bring any warmth because the Shinigami's cold grip was still in the air. District of Uchiha Fugaku had just woken up and was about to make himself some coffee when he heard a knock on his door, which made him grumble something under his breath. As he rubbed his eyes to get rid of the sleep, he heard the knocking again. Just a second. He yelled, annoyed that he didn't have time to make his morning coffee. When the clan leader opened the door, he was shocked by what he saw. Is that you, Naruto? Naruto nodded and asked, May I come in, Fugaku-san? I have a few questions to ask, if you don't mind. Naruto bowed when he saw Fugaku let him in. When the door shut, he was told to go to the kitchen table. Uzumaki-san, please sit down. Would you like some coffee? Naruto was about to answer when he felt several cold and dark key signatures coming toward him. When Fugaku didn't get a reply, he turned around and was surprised by Naruto's cold eyes. No eight-year-old should have eyes like that. As the head of the clan was about to speak, Naruto stood up and put his hand up. Raise the alarm, our enemies are heading this way. Fugaku looked at the threat and then shook his head. I'm sure those sounds are just some clan members practicing early in the morning. There's nothing to worry about. Naruto looked at the leader of the clan in a calm way. Listen to me, Uchiha-san, if you care about the lives of your clan in this village. Four shuriken flew through the window next to Naruto, which he blocked with his bakken. When Fugaku found out the answer, he ran outside and blew a huge fireball into the sky. As the sounds of fighting and the screams of the hurt and dying started to mix, an explosion was heard in the distance. Naruto was angry because he knew that place too well, but he listened to Fukui's advice and quickly calmed down. On the other hand, his mind was a different story. First they had the nerve to attack Konoha, and now they're trying to destroy my father's home. Naruto didn't care, and as soon as he remembered everything he had been taught, he stopped feeling anything. Fugaku couldn't help but shiver as he walked out the door because Naruto's power was so strong. It was angry like a storm but calm like a gentle breeze. Fugaku didn't need to be told what to do. His family came first, and if Naruto's behavior was any indication, so did Konoha. Naruto looked at the two Anbu who had just appeared to his right and said, Naruto Uzumaki, you should come with us. If you don't do it, you'll get hurt. Naruto put away his bakken and was ready to fight, but he was a little nervous because he hadn't learned the second set of sword katas yet. You attack my home, and because of that, you will die quickly. You attack my home, and because of that, you will die quickly. The Hokage Tower 
Hirazin just walked into his office to talk with his two students about the medic program and what the spy network had found out. But just as they were about to sit down and start, they saw a huge fireball in the sky, and then there was a big explosion at the Namikaze estates. Hirazin slammed his fists down on his desk, which made it and the walls crack. He was so angry that the hidden Anbu fell to their knees, and Jiraiya and Tsunade didn't do much better. Jiraiya, go to the Namikaze home with some Anbu. Tsunade, make sure the hospital is ready to take in the injured. Anbu, get the civilians to shelters and send all available shinobi to the Uchiha district and the root base, Hirazan said with steely eyes. Any Anbu who are still alive should come with me, because Danzo and I have an old debt to pay. Start point. Danzo smiled when he saw Torun and Fu, two of his most loyal agents, kneeling in front of him. Torun said without any emotion, the operation has begun, Danzo-sama. What are your orders? In fact, yes, said the Warhawk as he started walking around the room. You two will help me burn any evidence, and then we'll make our escape. Fu nodded and was about to ask to be let go when there was a huge explosion in the building. Not long after that, Fu and Torun heard sounds of fighting, which made them decide to protect their master no matter what. But one person came out of the smoke, making Danzo clench his fists in anger. It was Sai, who was followed by a small army of former members of Root. Your days of tyranny are over, Danzo. Said Sai as he pointed his tanto at the elder. By the end of the day, you won't be alive anymore. You miserable beast, I gave you a father figure, a place to sleep, food, and training, and this is what you give me in return. Sai's eyes narrowed as he saw Torun and Fu getting ready to attack, and then he turned back to his former master. Yet you were the one who killed my parents and my brother Shin. What a horrible father you turned out to be. I will be glad to get rid of you. You are a disease that needs to be wiped out. Sai had said what he needed to say and was in a ready position. Danzo, come on, let's start the dance of death. Danzo didn't waste any time. He quickly took the hidden blade out of his cane and told Fu and Torun to attack the ex-root who was standing behind Sai. Soon, only the master and the former student were left in the room. With a shout, they both began to dance. The revolt had just started. District of Uchiha. Naruto moved gracefully to avoid the emotionless drone's taijutsu attacks. All of his Aikido training was starting to pay off. Naruto felt like he was almost dancing. Block a punch with your forearm, duck under a kick, back roll to make room, then jump up and do it all over again. After this went on for a minute, Naruto decided to go on the attack. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He knew that if he made one wrong move, these opponents could kill him. Naruto rushed in and dodged a sword cut while using the armor on his forearm to block a blow from the other attacker. Naruto slid under the root agent to his left, turned, and kicked him in the back of the knees, making him fall to the ground. Before Naruto could use this to his advantage, the other agent tried to stab him in the head. Naruto quickly pulled out his Bakken and blocked the attack without even thinking about it. When Naruto saw the slight hesitation, he used it to his advantage. He blocked his opponent's blade with his right hand and then hit the agent in the solar plexus with his right shoulder. As Naruto thought about what to do next, he forgot about the agent he had kicked in the knees. It was close, but Naruto was able to duck just as the sword went over his head, knocking a few blonde hairs to the ground. One root agent was in front of Naruto and the other was behind him. They all stood still as they thought about what to do next. It was only a few seconds long, but it felt like ages. The agent in front of Naruto suddenly attacked, but he used a shunshin to appear right in front of him, with his tanto ready to hit the young samurai in the heart. As the blade got closer and closer to Naruto, time slowed down to a crawl. The Kayubi could only watch with a little bit of fear in his eyes, which was a feeling he hadn't had in a long time. Naruto thought, is this how I die? Then he remembered why he was fighting. I can't die here. This is my home, and when the Kayubi attacked, my parents gave their lives for it. Now. It's my job to make sure no more blood is shed today. The root agents were amazed as Naruto dodged the blow by bending backwards like a cat. The agent behind Naruto was so surprised that he didn't have time to move out of the way of his partner's sword, which went straight through his heart. Naruto yelled and thrust his key enhanced Bakken through the chest of the agent who tried to kill him. He didn't waste a good chance. Time stopped for Naruto as he thought about what he had just done. When he looked at his bloody hands, his hands shook and his breath shook. His eyes filled with tears. 
Naruto had thought about this situation many times before this day, but it was a whole different thing to actually do it. Yami smiled because he knew that now was the right time to strike. He gave the Kyubi behind the cage the same smile. Kyubi, now is the time to take over your host. Show him how powerful you are. Kyubi first looked at Yami, then at his container, and then back at Yami. The Biju was confused. It could either take control of his host when he was weak or help the person who reminded Kayubi of its father, Hagoromo Sutsuki, the sage of six paths. Kayubi looked at Yami straight in the eyes and made a choice. I could take over my host, but maybe, just this once, I'll help the one who reminds me of the one who gave me life. You stupid, dirty, delusional fool. Yami yelled as he ran up to the cage and hit the bars with all his strength. Don't you see the chance in front of you? You can burn Konoha to the ground, just like you tried to do so many years ago. If you knew the truth about what happened that night, you would think very differently, said the biju to the peon below him. He was not the least bit amused. Even though he was a little confused, Yami knew that the beast in the cage was much stronger than he was. So, with a growl of irritation, he walked into the back of Naruto's mind. After he left, it was time to get back to work. Kayubi sighed, still not believing he was doing this, and made a mental link with the container. Get a grip, you stupid person. Naruto stuttered, K Kayubi? His surprise turned into a little bit of anger. What do you want? You chose to take over when I was weak. Kayubi grumbled in irritation before saying, No, I'll help you, but just this once. You haven't earned my trust yet, but if you do well today, I might tell you the truth about what happened the night I attacked your home village. Naruto didn't know what to say. How could he when the biju you were taking care of for eight years hated your guts and then decided to help? And what's the catch? Naruto asked calmly. The biju's angry eye twitched, but then he understood what Naruto meant. Here, Kayubi showed Naruto a side of himself that not many people saw. Have sympathy. No catch, Naruto. Just protect this village and this nation, and maybe show others the way to peace, just like my father tried to do when he made me and the others. Naruto's eyes got bigger as he said, the sage of six paths. Kayubi nodded in its cage and said, I will give you some of my power so you can do what you were trained to do and show the others what a samurai is all about. Naruto saw the fox in its cage smile, which caught him a little off guard. But that was all it took for another root agent to show up behind Naruto, ready to cut off his head. As soon as the Tonto started to move down, a red haze began to cover Naruto, which stopped the blade in its tracks. The agent watched as the person she was after stood up and turned to face her. Seeing this made her say three words. It was the beginning of a story with that name. Akuma's no senshi. Start point. Danzo fired an air bullet, which Sai dodged with skill. Before the war hawk could attack again, Sai drew a tiger and told it to go after his former master. Danzo cut the beast in half, turning it back into ink. This was bad news for Sai. During the first part of the fight, both of them used Taijutsu very hard, but neither of them gained any ground. Now, anything could happen. Sai, on the other hand, knew he wasn't strong enough to beat his old master, so he used the tricks he had learned. Before the fight, Sai made many copies of himself out of ink. Some of them joined the fight, while others stayed out of sight. Using these to his advantage, he would try to kill the Warhawk in front of him. After dodging another air bullet and a swipe from the cane sword, Sai used his ink mist technique to cover the area like the Seven Swordsmen did. Because of this, the former root agent switched places with one of his hidden clones just as Sai's attacks on Danzo started to hurt him. Do you really think this cheap trick will work? After some hand gestures, wind release, great breakthrough. As the wind began to blow the ink cloud away, the clone came up behind Danzo with a knife ready to stab him in the heart. But the leader of Root wasn't called a cage for nothing. He dodged the blow with skill and hit the clone in the nose with his right elbow, making it scatter. Soon after, another clone ran in, but he or she attracted a huge number of animals, just as the other hidden clones and Sai were doing. All of them were done at the same time. Super beast drawing like a beast. Danzo was attacked by tigers, bears, wolves, and other dangerous animals, which made the man laugh at the weak attempt. Even though he was old, Danzo dodged and cut with great skill. But when a few of the tigers got close enough to hurt him, he had enough and quickly called for Baku. Sai cursed in his mind when he saw the strange creature, and he cursed even louder when he and his clones started to get pulled in. Danzo used this to send out his wind release, 
vacuum serial waves, which cut through anything in their way. Sai tried to switch places with a clone from outside, but it was too late. As the artist was being pulled toward Baku, the attack cut him deeply. When Danzo heard the screams of pain, he turned around and smiled evilly at his subordinate. Sai, 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 he yelled, I am very upset with you. Attacking me all by yourself? I thought I had taught you better than that. He held his hidden blade ready to kill Sai. Sai turned around but couldn't say anything. He was in too much pain, and the amount of blood he was losing made him realize that death was close. As Danzo lifted the sword, Sai closed his eyes and smiled as he waited for the end. I'm coming home, Shin, mother, and father. He was thinking when he heard a clang, which made him open his eyes and look around. He was surprised to see that the Sandame Hokage had 20 Anbu. Hiruzen was able to hold the blade that would end it all because he had hardened his skin with Earth Chakra. Danzo looked up the arm and into Hiruzen's cold eyes, which made the older man jerk away. Some of you need to get Sai to Tsunade as soon as possible, and the rest of you need to help the rebellion. Danzo and I have an old debt to pay, Hiruzen said harshly, his cold eyes boring into Danzo's mad eyes. Oh, Hiruzen, it's great to. Shut up, Danzo, Hiruzen said in a tone that suggested he was an old hand. In the past, I've been forgiving of the things you've done, but that's over now. Our friendship is over as of today. Hiruzen let go of the cane sword, which made Danzo sigh. He then took a step back to give his old friend some space before the fight began. As the Serutobi called up his good friend Enma, Danzo had one last thing to say before everything went crazy. This has been a long time coming, old friend. Out of all my opponents, you're the one I respect the most, even though you've done some questionable things in the past, he said with a sigh as he held his cane sword ready. Enma turned into an adamantine staff, and the Sandame gave him a nod. Danzo, you've never said anything more true. Shall we start? Danzo sent his summon away and decided to fight like when he and Hiruzen used to spar in the past. As they fought, the two people who were now enemies let out a war cry. Two cage level shinobi were now fighting. District of Uchiha. The root agent was scared of the person standing in front of her. He had blood red eyes with black pupils like a cat's, long teeth, and an aura that said, death. Naruto looked at his bloody bakken and then at his fallen tonto. He wiped the blood off his training sword, put it back in its sheath, and grabbed the weapon that had been used against him not long ago. Again, Naruto looked into his attacker's scared eyes and said his command in a voice that sounded like a mix of his own and Kyuubi's. Then he disappeared in a blur. You are just another person. Leave. The root agent's last sight was darkness as her head was cut cleanly from her shoulders. Naruto walked up behind his opponent and held out his tanto. There was no blood on the blade. Fukui watched him go to other parts of the district with some curiosity and a little bit of fear. Hum, so Kayubi has decided to help my student, or will it use this to get a hold of Naruto so it can control him in the future? Harumasa smiled after a short pause. I'm just worrying too much, my student will win. Stop. Shouted a root agent as other agents ran up behind him to stop. The retired samurai just disappeared and then showed up again in front of the 20 root agents. The person behind Fukui fell forward without a head, which scared the other agents. When the samurai's enemies moved away, he hummed a strangely happy tune as he walked toward the group without fear. As he did this, he grabbed the umbrella on his back, lifted it above his head, and opened it. Now, the agents didn't know what to do. The weather is nice, but it's going to rain today, right? One of the agents asked, what are you talking about? There's not a cloud in the sky. The answer came quickly in the form of an explosion that sent blood and body parts raining down. Once the storm was over, Harumasa put away his umbrella and stabbed one of the agents standing in front of him. Before the root agents could do anything, the older samurai quickly pulled out his katana and put it back as he walked away. Once it was set, the rest of the agents fell to their deaths in bloody pieces. Fukui walked away while still humming that creepy tune, like when he moved toward the agents. The Anbu who showed up next to him didn't like that song, and they started to wonder if Fukui was even sane. Um, Samurai-san, why did you have to be so messy? Did you know that we are at war? Harumasa asked, still smiling. Right. I'm sorry, Samurai-san, but seeing you in action for the first time is, to say the least, impressive. The person just nodded and watched as a red blur flew by, making him laugh. Oh, Naruto. I wonder what will be going through your mind after this day is over. 
Maybe I'll have to talk to your darkness myself to make sure our trip goes smoothly. When it comes to Naruto A. Eh? Naruto showed up next to Fugaku and Itachi. They were a little scared when they saw the red aura around him because they thought the Kyubi had taken over. Fugaku asked, is that you, Naruto, or the Kyubi? He then moved back a few steps as Naruto turned to him, smiled, and showed off his fangs. This is all me, Fugaku-san. For once in my life, Kyubi has been helpful. Naruto suddenly moved out of the way of a punch, grabbed the hand that was about to hit him, and brought it down on his knee. It broke with an awful crack. Naruto threw the broken arm to the side, which caused the attacker to stumble, which Naruto used to his advantage. He punched his opponent in the stomach, but the punch went all the way through. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, and he pulled his hand away with disgust on his face. Yuck. Naruto bent down and wiped his bloody hand on the person he had just killed, then stood up and looked at the two Uchiha. Well, are you going to take part in the party or just sit there and catch flies? At the end, Naruto laughed because he saw Fugaku and Itachi's jaws drop when they saw him. When he didn't get a reply, Naruto walked calmly to a nearby clearing and sat in a seiza position as he felt enemies coming. As he waited, Itachi laughed and shook his head. He's only 8 years old, but he can already kill Anbu, and he does it very quickly. Fugaku replied with a sigh, but how will he feel about himself after today? Itachi winced when he thought about how he was the first time he killed. It took him a week to come to terms with what he had done. Before he could say anything, more enemies showed up, which led to another fight. As they were fighting, they saw that Naruto was surrounded by five root agents and started to worry. That worry turned into shock, though, when Naruto suddenly opened his eyes and split the agent in front of him in two, his sword a blur. Then Naruto finished his Seiza Keita by stabbing the enemy to the right, dodging an attempt to cut off his head, and slashing up at the root agent who was coming at him. Sad to say, that was the end of the good news. The last two root agents were able to stab Naruto in the back, coming close to his spine. As Naruto screamed in pain, the red aura around him grew stronger until the whole village could feel it. Jiraiya was done at the Namikaze estate, which was a good thing. Without warning, a punch to the back of the head killed the two agents, and slapping a seal on Naruto's forehead made Kayubi's aura disappear. Before Naruto fell asleep, he smiled at his godfather's face and said a few things. Kayubi gave me a hand. Jiraiya sighed as he held his godson like a bride and then gave him to Fukui when he showed up. The samurai bowed and said, Thank you, Jiraiya-sama. I'll make sure my student gets a lot of rest. The toad sage smiled and nodded. He did well out there, but the fact that Kayubi is now helping Naruto is, to put it mildly, disturbing. Harumasa said, hi, in a firm voice. But I'll check on my own to see what its real goals are. He paused, then spoke again, this time in a calm, wise voice. Don't worry about my students' injuries, they'll get better soon. Scars are what make a boy into a man. After that, both the teacher and the student left, leaving Jiraiya and the others to finish fighting, which wouldn't take long. By afternoon, all of the fighting was over, and word quickly spread through the village and to the elemental nations about Naruto's skills. Start point. The rebellion was pretty much over when the last loyal route turned themselves in, but those who started it with Sai didn't stop. They stayed to watch the fight between their old master and their Hokage because it was rare to see something like that. In fact, the fight left them speechless because they didn't know Shinobi could get that strong. The hits would make loud booms, but the people fighting would look like a blur. All of a sudden, the Sandame fired a fire dragon bullet at Danzo, and the people watching had to split up. The War Hawk was able to stop the attack because he knew almost everything there was to know about wind. He then used the wind that had built up to throw a huge wind sphere at Hiruzen. He didn't move an inch and calmly put up an earth-style wall to stop the attack, like a real cage. As they jumped, Danzo and Hiruzen met in the air after the dust had settled. The Sandame tried to hit Danzo in the stomach with his staff, but the root leader used it as a weapon. Danzo did forget one thing, though, the staff was a changed Enma. The Monkey King took his hand off the staff and grabbed Danzo's leg. Here is where Hiruzen and Enma talked about how to attack. Enma threw the root leader into the air, and Serutobi hit him in the middle with the staff, making Danzo cough and wheeze. Shortly after that, the person fell with a loud crash in a cloud of dust. The two weren't called cage for nothing, though, as Hiruzen suddenly dodged Danzo's cane sword swing. Soon after, the Hokage used Enma as a pole vault to get away, 
but instead of attacking like Hiruzen thought he would, he just watched as his old friend started to take off his arm bandages. I applaud you, Hiruzen, and I'm glad to see that old age hasn't caught up with you yet. But alas, you'll fall here, and I'll take over as the next ruler of Konoha. The Sandame was angry and ready to attack when the bandages fell to the ground. The face of Hashirama Senju was there, on Danzo's shoulder. Hiruzen said softly, Dear Kami Danzo, please tell me you didn't do what I think you did. Danzo just smiled and made a few hand signs before using a jutsu that hadn't been seen since Hashirama was alive. Say hello to Sensei for me. Wood release. The nativity of a sea of trees. The group of people watching suddenly left when they felt the ground shake and saw tree seedlings start to grow. When Hiruzen saw how far his old friend had fallen, he couldn't believe it. But when the ground started to crack, Hiruzen knew what was going to happen. Danzo yelled, and as he did, he put more chakra into his trump card. The saplings then exploded outward and upward, becoming trees. Some broke through the ceiling. Enma went back to his real form as he and the Hokage tried to avoid getting hit as best they could. But the Monkey King knew he would be needed later, so he jumped to a place where he thought he would be safe and waited in the shadows. Hiruzen knew that the whole base would fall soon as more and more trees broke through the ceiling. Stop this Danzo, you're going to kill us both. He yelled, hoping that his old friend would stop this madness. In return, all Serutobi got was an evil laugh, and then more trees grew out of the ground. Suddenly, the whole ceiling and parts of the floor fell down. Parts of the village fell down because of this, of course. Most of them were empty buildings in the red light district, which was a good thing. When the trees stopped growing and the dust settled, it was possible to see a cracked earthen dome. One that quickly fell apart, revealing an unharmed Hiruzen, who let out a sigh of relief and started looking for Danzo. But at that point, he felt pain in his chest and coughed up blood. When he looked down, he saw a small, thin blade that was stained with blood. Hiruzen sputtered, H how? When he saw Danzo holding his cane sword behind him and grinning wildly. Danzo, on the other hand, was not in the best shape. Blood came out of his wounds and where pieces of skin were missing. The bandages on one of his eyes were stained red, and the old wound had opened up again. I just became one of the trees I made, Danzo said after he coughed up some blood. It's too bad it got broken by a falling rock, but it doesn't matter because you'll soon meet the Shinigami. Sandame was hurt, but she suddenly smiled and laughed, a deep, booming laugh that caught Danzo by surprise. In one word, Danzo, boom. The Warhawk's eye grew bigger just before a huge explosion took over his whole body. Up in the trees, Enma helped Hiruzen stand up when something fell on his right leg. Probably, the Sandame would have died if not for the Monkey King. He said, thank you, Enma, you saved me again, but he was sad about what he had to do. Enma smiled and patted his summoner on the shoulders. You did the right thing, my friend. His rule is over now, and Konoha can be at peace again. The Sandame nodded, but a single tear came out of one eye. He wiped it off quickly and told Enma to take him to the hospital. With a puff of white smoke, the two of them were gone. The trees that bloomed would always be a reminder of the fight. Harumasa's Marketplace Fukui put Naruto on the cot in the back of the store, where his office was. When he got there, he looked at his students' wounds and wasn't surprised to see that they were completely healed. The old samurai sighed and walked over to a nearby chair. He put it next to the cot and sat down. Then, he put his right hand on Naruto's head, shut his eyes, and focused. Soon, Harumasa was standing in front of a huge cage whose inhabitants were looking right at him. So, the master decides to pay a visit, the Kayubi said in a tense way. Humph, how cute. Fukui just sat down and stared the fox in the eyes, like Naruto had done not too long ago. Tell me, Kayubi-san, did you help my student for his own good or for yours? If the mortal dies, so do I. Nothing more, nothing less. QB gave a small growl of irritation and then laid down in his small cage. I'm not sure why I'm telling you this. Fukui shrugged and said, perhaps that hate-filled shell of yours is finally starting to crack. Don't believe it, I'm a dangerous beast. I won't help the mortal again, it was a one-time deal, Kayubi said, now wanting to get this man out of the mindscape. I think he is capable of taking care of himself. The old samurai shook his head and sighed, Kayubi-san, you are saying two different things. 
On the one hand, you said that helping Naruto was good for both of you, but you also said that you won't help him again. Kayubi might be wooing the boy, but I won't let that happen, Harumasa. Yami cut in to make his presence known. I will show Naruto that darkness is the way to go and that Kayubi's power is the only way to get revenge on those who have wronged him. I know that you have been giving my student nightmares for the past six months. After what happened today, his mind will be weak when he realizes what he has done. Yami was angry at the samurai's calm tone, but then he gave her a sly smile. A weak mind is a strong mind for me. Easy to control, easy to beat, and easy to get back at. Fukui sighed again, stood up, and brushed the dirt off his kimono that he thought was there. I don't doubt your intentions, Yami, but as a test for you, Kayubi, he looked the beast in the eyes again, you will have to make sure your container doesn't fall off the cliff. You said that if he dies, you die too. Harumasa then vanished, making Yami and Kayubi look at each other. So, my furry friend, what shall it be? Yami asked the most important question, will you help me take over, or will you show that your hateful shell has been broken? So, my furry friend, what shall it be? Will you help me take over, or will you show that your hateful shell has been broken? Kayubi barked at Yami while he tried to figure out what to do. Naruto luckily showed up here, but the way he was acting as he approached Kayubi's cage scared the fox and made Yami very happy. The Uzumaki had dead-looking eyes, pale skin, and a permanent frown that seemed to have been there for a long time. His once spiky blonde hair was now tousled, giving him the look of a lost soul having no depth or feeling. Takami. Kayubi's mind let out a small gasp. Yes, this is just right. I just have to push the right buttons, and he'll lose it. Once I'm in charge, I'll set the Kayubi free, and Konoha will finally have to deal with what they've done. With a wicked grin, Yami thought. Naruto stopped in front of Kayubi's cage and sat down in the Siza position without saying a word. He had no idea what the two beings were thinking. Naruto chose instead to look at himself in the murky water. Yami and Kayubi only saw a muscle in his cheek twitch and a single tear roll down his cheek and land in the water below. It hit the walls of the mindscape with a thud. Come on, Naruto, talk to me. Kayubi said this with worry. Don't listen to Kayubi Naruto. The beast is just trying to lead you astray. Yami replied, trying his best to make Naruto's mind even more broken. Don't you understand? Don't you see that you must have the power to kill people who have hurt you? Not a thing. Naruto kept looking at his reflection with a soulless look on his face. Kayubi let out a sad whimper and lowered its head so it could look into Naruto's cold blue eyes. This time, Naruto lifted his head to look into the huge red orbs in front of him. Kill, Kayubi. I did it. Naruto looked at his hands and thought they were stained with blood. His voice was hoarse and emotionless. How can I live with myself after doing that? A samurai is supposed to be moral and fair, but killing is the opposite of that. You can always kill yourself and let the Kayubi go, Yami said with a shrug as he got closer to Naruto, still smiling sickly. Or maybe merge with me so we can wreck Konoha together. Naruto stopped for a moment and started to think about whether or not that was a good idea. When Kayubi saw this boy, he couldn't help but feel something pull at his heart. Didn't Bushido say something about how Naruto was going to die? What is this Bushido that all samurai are supposed to follow? Kayubi won again, and Yami was even more angry when he saw Naruto's eyes go wide in shock. As Naruto began to recite the Bushido code, which he had spent a lot of time trying to learn, one part stopped him. Treats death as a guide, not as an enemy. Naruto's face broke into a smile, and his dull eyes began to light up. Why, yes. Kayubi smiled when he saw Naruto's eyes light up. It was a rare thing for him to do. Yami, on the other hand, was not going to let Naruto get away from him. Did the blood feel good in your hands? Did it feel good to kill the people who tried to kill you? Yami bent over Naruto and whispered in his left ear. What's it like to have your innocence taken away? Are you sure the villagers will respect you now that you've used Kayubi's chakra? When Naruto realized Yami was right, his eyes got dull. When Kayubi saw this, he thought of a curse because he didn't want to play this card yet. Naruto, would your parents be proud of you if you destroy the village they died protecting? The Biju said this so that his container would be able to see the light. No, Kayubi, they wouldn't, he said. Naruto's eyes lit up again, and a small smile formed on his face. But you still forget that Kayubi killed your parents on that terrible night. 
Yami spoke up in a heated way. Shesh, Yami, you have no idea what happened that night. Kayubi said with anger, flailing his tails around the cage as he watched Naruto's eyes go dark again. A man in a mask pulled me out of Kashina Uzumaki and put me under a genjutsu. I was then told to attack Konoha. Think I was happy with what I did? Killing all those worthless slaves under my feet? We Biju were happy until these stupid humans decided to seal us up. Both Yami and Naruto's eyes grew big in shock. Both, though, said the same thing. Wait, what? Kayubi smiled when Yami almost couldn't say anything for once. He laughed out loud and let out a snort, which made Naruto's hair rustle. And the best part is that the crime was done by a man who was pretending to be Madara Uchiha. As Naruto stood there with his fists clenched by his sides, his eyes changed quickly. Yami saw that Naruto's feelings were getting more and more mixed, so she tried to push him one last time. See? That's why it's so nice to get even. You can get even for the death of your parent, you can. Naruto turned around and punched Yami in the gut before he could finish. The dark half was bent over with a fist in his stomach and spittle coming out of his mouth. His eyes were wide with shock. You're becoming quite a pest, Yami, and you can't keep trying to poison my mind with your bad ideas. Naruto spoke to Yami in a harsh whisper. Since I decided to become a samurai, Kayubi has at least been kind to me. What do you mean? Nothing but torment my soul and turn me away from the one thing I must always do. Bushido is nothing but a fool's code of honor. As he pushed himself off of Naruto's fist, Yami said. Kayubi winced when he heard this, and Naruto's eyes narrowed in anger. The next thing Yami knew, his head was hitting the armor plate on Naruto's right knee, causing him pain. The key powered strike broke up most of Yami's face with a sickening snap that echoed off the walls of the mindscape. Not satisfied, Naruto slammed his dark half into a nearby wall with a snap kick. Yami hit it and stayed there for a while before splashing down into the shallow water below. Naruto took a deep breath and stood up. His eyes and body language showed that he was an experienced warrior. I'm sure we'll see each other again, Yami. Sad to say, it's not yet my time to fully defeat you, because I can still feel hate in the biju behind me. Naruto said it calmly as he waved his hand toward the cage behind him. Go back to your realm and heal, Yami. But know that when you come back, I will be waiting to kill you for good. Yami sneered at his other half and then vanished into what looked like black ash. After watching them go, Naruto turned to the beast in the cage and bowed to it. Thank you. Kayubi, for helping me get through what was going on. A tough situation that will take much longer to get through. Also, what went down the night I was born? I really am sorry. On that day, we both lost something. I lost my parents, but you gave up your only chance to be free. Kayubi couldn't say anything back because everything Naruto had said was true. On my honor as a samurai, we will find the man who made our lives a living hell, and we will show him the true power of the Akuma no Senshi. Naruto said this in a kingly voice, slammed his right fist on his chest, and then stuck it out toward the cage. Kayubi looked at Naruto, then at the fist. Did you mean this, father? Did you see this coming before you died? Naruto. You're a very interesting kid. Maybe it's time for me to start over and start a new life. The biju sighed and looked into the eyes of the person who held it. Kayubi took its right paw, made a fist, and connected it to Naruto's with a smirk and a small laugh. The mindscape changed into what Naruto thought it would be like when he first met Kayubi and Yami because a pulse went through it. The sky was blue and the sun was high in the sky. There was a lush forest with sounds of animals. Where the cage used to be, a cave was now open. The seal that had been on that cage was now on a collar around Kayubi's neck. The biju got up slowly and walked out of the cave. He took a deep breath and started to laugh, even though tears were coming out of his eyes. Kayubi was happy for the first time in more than 50 years. This is amazing, Naruto. Our journey has just begun, Kayubi, Naruto couldn't help but grin. Our trip has just started. Harumasa's marketplace. Jiraiya and Hiruzen kept an eye on Naruto as Harumasa sat nearby and sharpened his katana. The Hokage had to use crutches while his leg healed, but that didn't stop him from doing his job, which he knew would soon be done. It's been two days, Sensei. Shouldn't we bring in Inoichi to see if Naruto is still thinking straight? The Toad Sage said this with worry. Don't worry about my student's sanity. He'll come to soon. 
Fukui spoke up, and he was smiling. I think a lot was going on in that head of his. Maybe he has stopped the darkness inside him? The Sandame was amused by how calm the samurai were, and most of them were. One of the reasons they were so dangerous in battle was because of this. Without showing any emotion, it was almost impossible to figure out what they were going to do next. This was a little scary, but Hiruzen knew he could trust the man who gave Naruto a second chance at life. A few minutes later, the room was filled with groans, which made the three of them rush to Naruto's side. The Uzumaki gasped as he opened his eyes and thought about what had happened to his home. Namikaze estates. How are they, how are the scrolls inside, and what about? The room heard a smack as Fukui hit his student in the face with his free hand. Naruto couldn't help but laugh as he rubbed the red mark and saw how shocked Hiruzen and Jiraiya looked. When he stopped laughing, he looked at his master and thanked him. Then he looked at the Hokage and saw that he was using crutches. Hokage-sama, I don't think you should be out walking. It looks like a bad injury. I've been in three shinobi wars, so this is nothing compared to what I've been through before. Hiruzen said as he ruffled Naruto's hair and smiled. As for the Namikaze estates, it was safe because of the seals your father made. That explosion was meant to stop anyone who wasn't of Namikaze blood from getting on the grounds. Yeah. When I and the Anbu got there, most of the poor scum were already dead. The wise man laughed and shook his head. Ha! I was too good at teaching my student. After a short moment of silence, Naruto sighed and looked at his hands. My innocence is gone, master, but the strangest thing happened while I was out. Kayubi helped me again, and now. Well, now we're getting to know each other better. It wants to work with me and start over. Come back again? The older people in the room just stared at Naruto. As he got up, Naruto laughed and rubbed the back of his head. Yeah, I guess I make it think of its father, the Sage of Six Paths. Also, when it attacked, it told me the truth about what happened. When the room went quiet, Naruto told what he had been told. At the end of the story, it goes without saying that the adults were shocked. Jiraiya, on the other hand, rubbed his temples and made a small grunt. Wow. This man in a mask looks like someone my spies have seen. It looks like this man is starting a group, but I don't know what its goals are. They call themselves Akatsuki, and they all wear black cloaks with red clouds on them. Fukui hummed as he thought about his student before he looked at him. It looks like the weather has changed, my student. We need to hurry to Iron Country to finish your training. As soon as one storm ends, another one starts to blow, Naruto said with a frown. Naruto groaned and got out of bed. He walked to the changing rooms so his armor and other things could be put back on. Fukui, Hiruzen, and Jiraiya knew what Naruto had been through and what he was about to do. He was going to find a way to deal with the fact that he had killed and would continue to kill for the rest of his life. Hiruzen smiled sadly as he saw his surrogate grandson walk into the changing room. He's only eight years old, and he's already got blood on his hands. Not since the time of the Warring Clans has a child had to go through such a terrible thing. Do you think that the Kayubi can be trusted? With a serious look on his face, Jiraiya asked. It can, of course. Fukui cut Hiruzen off before he could answer. Didn't you see the truth in the eyes of my student? Didn't you see how happy it made him? I'm telling you, Jiraiya-san and Hokage-sama, that the Akuma no Senshi will be more than just a rumor if those two work together in the end. All three of them laughed as they thought back to the rumors that were floating around the village about a demonic warrior who helped protect Konoha. Some people knew who this warrior was, while others just thought it was a ghost. Harumasa and the other people who saw Naruto in action knew that a legend was just getting started. Naruto came back in his armor with his Bakken strapped to his right side five minutes later, which made the three elders smile proudly as they looked at him. Fukui, however, gave his student a nod to show that he understood. I can see that you want to find a way to deal with what happened to you two days ago. The young samurai's eyes grew wide for a moment, and then he rubbed his chin while thinking. What, two days? After a short pause, he gave a small smile. Master, do you think we can find an instrument? Something small and portable like an ocarina? I think that's a great idea, my student. As he walked up to Naruto and patted him on the shoulders, the older samurai said. Come with me, and I'll take you to a store where I sell things. Hiruzen took the clay pipe out of his Hokage robes and put it in his mouth. He decided to wait to light it until he got back to his office. Please excuse Jiraiya and me, 
Haruma Sadono. Jiraiya and I have some important things to talk about. Before they left the store, both the Hokage and Jiraiya bowed to the old samurai. As they walked away, they both had the same thought. Naruto, stay safe out there. The world can be a mean mistress. The shop of Higarashi. As the teacher and student walked to the store, many civilians smiled and waved at Naruto. Some shinobi who had seen Naruto fight looked at him with awe and a little fear, and some civilians made fun of him. He knew exactly what those sneers were all about. It seems that some people can't see that I am the one who keeps the great Kayubi in jail. Oh, you make me feel good. Kayubi said, and he let out a small laugh. Ha. Huh. Do you now understand why I call you people, stupid? Shut up you fluff. Naruto smiled to himself. Just now. Kayubi's eyes blinked as he was shocked by what Naruto said. I'm going to eat you, you little turd. Naruto laughed at this and then looked at his master, who had a confused look on his face. All we did was talk a little bit, but Kayubi seems to hate the name I gave it. And what would that be? Harumasa asked why. Light and fluffy. As Naruto kept walking, his master stopped, put his hands on his sides, and laughed out loud. Ha! Huh. He said the Kayubi were soft. I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. Fukui took a deep breath to calm himself down, then smiled and said, Ah, Naruto. Even though you're no longer a child, I still see that wild child in you. A good trait to have since you haven't gotten rid of the darkness yet. Naruto and Fukui did make it to the store in the end. Two people were at the counter when they opened the door. One was a girl with brown hair tied into buns on both sides, and the other was about six feet tall, had a muscular build, and had short black hair. Naruto thought that the scars on his face were from when he was a shinobi. His skin was tanned, and he had a lot of them. Ah, Harumasa-sama, I see that you brought your student here today. The big, strong man said in a deep baritone as he smiled at Naruto and looked down at him. There have been a lot of rumors about what you did two days ago, Akuma no Senshi. Naruto laughed and rubbed the back of his head to cover up his shame. The girl next to me is Tenten Higarashi, who I raised as my own daughter. Hello, my name is Dan, and it's nice to meet you, Uzumaki-san. Naruto bowed to show respect, and then he looked at his master, who nodded calmly. Do you happen to have an ocarina? I need. A way to deal with what I did. Dan heard the sad tone at the end when Uzumaki-san said, don't feel bad about what you did. You did what you had to do to keep Konoha safe, but most of all, you did what you had to do to stay alive. Higurashi-san, death is my guide, but I appreciate your words. Dan smiled and nodded, then turned to Fukui and said, you taught him well, Harumasa-san. I'm sorry, but I'll be right back. Tenten looked at the two samurai in front of her. As she looked at Naruto's armor and Fukui's two swords, she couldn't help but start to drool. Both of them saw this look, which made them sweat inside. Where did you get that armor, and can I have one? Tenten asked questions in a way that was too excited. Wow, I wonder what you had to do to get those swords. Can I please hold them? Tenten, what I did to get these weapons has never been done before by a shinobi. Fukui started off in a cold way. He hoped that what he said would teach the girl a good lesson. First, you have to train hard for many years, some of it alone in the snowy mountains of Iron Country. Most of the time, peace comes next, but for me it was a civil war. I had to kill my own wife because of war. I carry her swords with me now. Naruto let out an internal gasp, Tenten's eyes got bigger, and Dan stood in the doorway to the back room with his eyes closed, saddened by what his daughter had done. Memories that hurt. Tenten, after all I've been through, do you think I'll let you touch my weapons? She couldn't do anything but shake her head no as tears started to form in her eyes. Dan came out and gave Naruto a small black box when he thought that was enough. Before he opened it, though, the big man gave his daughter a kiss on the head and then looked at the samurai who was no longer fighting. I'm sorry Harumasa-san that you had to bring up those memories. Like one of my students said, death is my advisor. Fukui was happy. I hope your daughter learned something important today. Dan nodded, then excused himself and took Tenten upstairs so they could talk while the two samurai left the store. As they did this, Naruto looked sad at his master. Master, are you going to be okay? Is that why you told me to always look out for the people I care about and trust my gut? All those things you've taught me? The old samurai sighed and nodded. Hi, he said, 
but I can't think about the past because the future is so much better. The rest of the walk to the training grounds was silent because they were both thinking about painful memories. When they got to the grounds, they would start meditating. But before that, Naruto opened the box and gasped when he saw the ocarina inside. It was the color of the ocean and covered with Uzumaki spirals. As Naruto took the instrument out of the box, he saw two notes at the bottom. One was a handwritten note, and the other was a set of instructions on how to play. Naruto picked up the last one and began reading. Mr. Uzumaki. This was your mother Kashina Uzumaki's, and it has been in the Uzumaki family for a long time. She told me to keep it safe and give it to you when you needed it the most, before the Kyubi attacked. Kashina knew she wouldn't be able to see you grow up, which broke her heart. On the back of this note is the sheet music for an old Uzumaki song that is sad and reminds people of loss. They would be proud of you. Higurashi Dan. Naruto smiled and flipped the note over to look at the music. When Naruto got to the training ground, he sat down with the note in front of him and read the instructions on how to play. Because he had just started to meditate, the older samurai knew that Naruto would be fine and that he would be stronger after this. The Hokage Office. As Hiruzen sat in his chair, he closed his eyes and lit his pipe. He took a deep breath and then blew out the smoke, filling the office with the strong smell of tobacco. Tsunade and Jiraiya started to wonder what they were going to talk about, but their sensei's behavior told them it wasn't good. After a minute, the Sandame opened his eyes, which showed how old he was and what he had to go through to get his Shinobi no Kami title. My students, I've had a great life and have been Hokage for a long time, but I'm not getting any younger. Before going on, Hiruzen took another drag from his pipe. The fight with Danzo made me realize that I'm not the same person I used to be. If it weren't for Enma, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Sensei, what are you saying? Try to persuade. I don't think you're going to do what I think you're going to do, do you? Jiraiya looked at his teacher, then at Tsunade, and then at the Sandame again. He couldn't believe what was about to happen. Stop, Sensei. I have no chance of becoming Hokage. I have my own spy network, but to be honest, I don't think I'm good enough. I know Jiraiya and you both want Tsunade to be Hokage, but she has to run the medical program. Hiruzen thought this as he leaned back in his chair and got ready to take another puff from his pipe. Tell me, who do you think would be qualified to take up the mantle? Kakashi is one possibility. With a shrug, Tsunade said. However, his attitude of being lazy would be a big problem. Jiraiya agreed with Tsunade and added his own idea. Any of the clan leaders could be a choice, but I can see how that would give too much power to one of the clans. Power they can use to get what they want. Hiruzen smiled at his students, but the Toad Sage spoke up again just as he was about to say something. I've been keeping an eye on one person, and he would make a great Hokajia if he could walk again, that is. In fact, he has been giving me information about this man in a mask who has been seen around recently. The Sandame's curiosity was piqued, so he raised an eyebrow and said, Well, my student, could you please tell me who this person is? What do you know about the Sage of the Six Paths? Jiraiya said this with a grin. The next day, the Konoha Gates. Fukui Harumasa and Naruto Uzumaki were leaving, so everyone in the village gathered at the front gates to see them off. Today was the day they were going to leave for Iron Country, a trip that would take almost a week. Naruto was wearing his armor, but he also had a bag with him that had all the things he would need for a trip. A sleeping bag, some spices for the food they catch, clothes, repair kits for their armor and clothes, and a canteen full of water. Fukui wore his usual clothes, but on top of them, he wore samurai armor that looked like Mifune's. Like Naruto, he had a bag with all the important things in it. Well, my student, today is the start of the end of your training to be a samurai. Fukui said as he slapped Naruto on the back and smiled. Hi, I'm excited, but I can't help looking at my hands because I know more blood will stain them. Naruto smiled, but he let out a sigh, which made the Sandame put his old hand on the right shoulder of his surrogate grandson. You'll do fine, Naruto. When you're done training, please come back to see us. Hiruzen said it with love. Even better, I can give you something. The Sandame reached into his robes and pulled out a blank diary book and a pencil, which he gave to Naruto, who was happy to get them. I'm counting on you to write in that every day and send me updates every so often. Naruto, your parents would be proud of you, and so is all of Konoha. Naruto wiped away some tears and then hugged his grandfather. Jiraiya was next, and he gave an orange book to his godson. 
People who knew what that book was gave the Toad Sage death glares, including Tsunade. The Slug Sage, on the other hand, punched Jiraiya down. You're a whore. Poisoning our godson with that piece of garbage. Tsunade screamed, then turned to Naruto and pecked him on the head. This, of course, let him see her cleavage in all its glory. If you looked closely, you could see a little bit of blood coming out of Naruto's nose. Jiraiya, who had just moved up, was that person and smiled. Haha, like Minato. Naruto put Icha Icha and the diary in his bag quietly and then gave Tsunade a hug. Be good, Gaki, and I'll give you something I've loved for a long time. Tsunade smiled as she took the necklace Hashirama gave her off and put it on Naruto. When Hiruzen saw this, he got worried and looked at Tsunade. Tsunade, are you sure? You know about the supposed curse that comes with that necklace, right? What's the curse? Naruto asked with his head tilted back in surprise. Most of the time, the person who wears that necklace dies. Shizun told people who she was in a sad voice. Tsunade gave that to two people before her, and they both died. Naruto crossed his arms and muttered, HMPH. Bloody smirk. Don't worry about me, Tsunade-san. I promise that this necklace will get back to you. I don't doubt it, Gaki, Tsunade said with a smile. Go ahead and show the world what kind of people the Akuma no Senshi are. Naruto nodded and turned to look at his master, who also nodded. As they left, the villagers could be heard cheering. Some people were sad because they didn't know what would happen to the Uzumaki heir. Others, like those in the academy or just starting out, looked up to Naruto in a way. From a boy who had lost his way because of the villagers' hatred just two years ago, Naruto was now seen with happiness and goodwill. It wasn't his family history that made him change. It was what he did that showed who he really was. A child saved them from a monster that almost killed them all. They didn't start to move away until the two samurai were no longer in sight. As they did this, they knew in some way that Naruto would be the reason why the elemental nations would change in a big way. They didn't know, though, that someone was watching the whole thing from a distance. After it knew everything, it fell to the ground. In Iron Country, somewhere. Zetsu went back to the camp he had been to before. The same man was there, waiting very patiently, just like the last time. This time, though, he was sharpening his katana, and every so often he would look at himself in the polished blade. The man had gray hair that was getting thinner, deep lines on his face, and a nasty scar that made one of his eyesightless. This scar went from his chin to his forehead. It went through the left side of his lip and his left eye. Zetsu, it looks like you're back. The older man spoke, but he never took his eyes off his sword. What's up with the boy? The boy and his master are currently on their way to Iron Country, where it seems he will finish his training. As usual, the white half spoke, but only his head could be seen. May we eat the gaki? I'm hungry. Someone else said. Ignore my partner. Zetsu took a short break before saying, my master wants an update. He won't be happy with failure. The old man laughed and stopped what he was doing before saying, tell your master that everything is going as planned. Spies have been sent out and the forces are being put together. Mifune hasn't learned anything. Go now. I must finish what I'm doing. Zetsu went back into the ground without a word. Once the old man was out of sight, he ran his finger along his scar and clenched his hands in anger. But that anger turned into a grin. Fukui Harumasa, you may have given me this scar, but I gave you a bigger one. Oh, I can't imagine how much it hurt you to do that to your wife. He stopped and let out a crazy laugh. And to have Mifune give you retirement to oh, I can't wait to test your student myself. The man started to sharpen his katana again, but every now and then he would stop and let out a short, crazy laugh. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.